Hi, everyone, and welcome to the fifth annual LensFest. My name is Bobby Murphy, CTO at Snap. We're excited to be here to celebrate you, the global AR creator and developer community. It is so inspiring to see your ideas come to life as some of the most engaging, technically advanced, and impactful experiences available anywhere today. And we're absolutely invested in advancing the Snap AR platform alongside you. Augmented reality is already enhancing daily life at an incredible global scale today. 363 million people engage with our camera daily on Snapchat alone to talk with real friends and loved ones, to try on a new outfit, or to learn something new and surprising about the world around them. Experiences like these are used an average of 6 billion times per day by our global community. And there is so much opportunity ahead of us as we build out the next generation of computing in AR. By 2025, nearly 75% of the global population and almost all smartphone users will be frequent AR users. I'd like to kick off LensFest by talking about why we believe in the power of AR and why so many people engage with it so frequently. First, AR is inherently a hyper-personalized visual format. In any other visual media format, pictures, videos, games, the experience is fully defined by a creator. But in AR, the experience is a composition of the developer's imagination layered onto my own perspective. Each experience is totally unique, useful, relevant, and impactful because I get to be at the center of it. I see a dragon flying over the Venice Beach canals from my point of view. I see my face transformed with a ridiculous crying expression and my own hands as I learn how to read music. This gives you, our creator and developer community, an opportunity to build content in a completely new way. In fact, we found over and over that the best and most engaging AR experiences add to the world rather than replace it. And second, augmented reality is designed and developed to be incredibly fast and convenient. It's enabled by remarkable advances in computer vision and computer graphics that make it possible to both understand and transform images and videos in very sophisticated ways. These machine learning models are able to perceive the names and shapes of objects in an image and render changes to it in a fraction of a second. So fast, in fact, that we can understand and edit each frame of a video before the next frame appears. This represents a major step forward in our ability to create and interact with all forms of visual media. Images, videos, and live camera feeds can be understood, edited, enhanced, and augmented in real time. This level of performance allows us to do amazing new things with computing. We can interact with our world and get access to information much faster than we can with voice or keyboard inputs. Looking up plant species, car models, and wine ratings, pulling up a menu by QR code, or getting help solving a math problem are enabled through fast visual understanding. And we can visualize changes to our world in ways that would be impossible with much slower image and video editing tools. If I want to see what I'd look like in a new pair of glasses, I can do that in AR. And the speed of AR means that if I want to see those glasses on me from a hundred different angles, I can do that too in an instant. With AR, I could even try on many pairs of glasses faster than I could click through each of their product pages on a website. And I'd come away with a much better idea of which of them is the perfect pair for me. Zenni Optical did exactly this using our true size technology. Through lenses, their glasses have been tried on over 60 million times by Snapchatters. Augmented reality represents an opportunity to weave digital experiences right into the world around us, evolving the way we use computing in our daily lives. We are incredibly excited about where AR is today and where it can go in the future. And we see that excitement reflected in our community with remarkable growth of engagement across hundreds of millions of people. AR is not only a massive leap in our ability to transform and create visual media, but a major evolution in how we develop and distribute software experiences all together, centered around a camera, hyper-relevant and insanely fast. It is a massive part of our mobile experience on Snapchat today, and over time, we see greater opportunities for wearable hardware, like spectacles, to bring it to a new dimension. We love sharing technology and development with our community. Over the past five years, we've been building the Snap AR platform to make it incredibly intuitive to use, adaptable for a wide range of use cases, easy to learn new skills, and ultimately a place where you can build your career or business around AR. Throughout LensFest, we'll show you how all the facets of the Snap AR platform, advanced tech, educational resources, distribution and monetization pathways, and more all work together to fuel your creativity and businesses. 
I'll turn it over to Trevor Stevenson to show you the power of Lens Studio, where all AR creation starts. Thanks, Bobby. I'm Trevor, and I lead the Snap AR platform team. I'm excited to be here with you, not only for the fifth annual Lens Fest, but also the five-year anniversary of Lens Studio. Our AR creation tool was first built for Snap's own lens developers and designers who pioneered mobile AR on Snapchat. But we knew AR would be much more impactful if we put our creation tools in your hands to publish lenses on Snapchat or your own mobile app. And whether you're exploring a new dimension of your creativity or you're part of a professional studio, now, more than 300,000 creators, developers, and teams from around the world have built more than 3 million lenses right in Lens Studio. Over the past five years, we've taken the most innovative machine learning, computer vision, and spatial computing technologies developed by our team, made these tools adaptable for a wide range of use cases, and turned them over to you in an intuitive, user-friendly interface so you feel right at home. Our AR capabilities understand what's in the camera scene, reflect how people interact naturally, and render those AR elements realistically. Let's take a look at some of our latest advancements in scene understanding, scene interaction, and scene rendering. First, our team develops machine learning algorithms that understand the visual world. We generate representations that can automatically adapt to variations of people and places, understanding appearances, shapes, lighting, backgrounds, and more, so that AR elements track right onto the physical world. Let's take this video as an example. Computer vision detects a person's face and finds key points like the eyes and the mouth. We've turned this tech into a 3D face mesh capability, creating a custom fit mask for everyone, so an AR experience can be layered on with precision. We've also evolved this technology onto our 3D body mesh capability, so AR clothes fit just like the real thing over people of all shapes and sizes. Our tech understands the rest of the scene too, like where the floors and walls are, or objects and products in view, through capabilities like the world mesh and object detection. And it understands whether someone is outside with friends, or if it's the site of a location-based AR experience, like city scale AR over central London, downtown LA, and Santa Monica, a custom location that you've mapped, or one of our 30 landmarkers. This advanced technological foundation makes Lens Studio's scene understanding toolset the most comprehensive real-time AR tech stack publicly available today. Next, Lens Studio's scene interaction tools let people engage with your lenses in ways that mirror how we already interact with the world around us, with our hands, and together with friends. Gesture recognition and finger tracking understand the hand movements in the camera scene, so people can learn how to sign or check out a whole different look with the swipe of their hand. And Two-hand tracking brings both of your hands into the scene. We've also improved multi-user services, making it easier to build AR experiences that connect groups of friends at the same time within the same lens. The quality of rendering is proving rapidly. Soon, it may be tough to tell the difference between an AR item and a physical one. Lens Studio's scene rendering capabilities, including remote assets and ray tracing, work together so AR looks and feels like a true part of the real world. Remote Assets, part of our Lens Cloud suite of backend services, now lets you build robust, complex lenses by storing assets in our cloud and downloading them on demand. With file sizes extended up to 25 megabytes, you can add multiple assets into one lens, like a series of educational lessons or dozens of photos in an AR memorial. Ray tracing simulates how light behaves in the real world reflecting your physical environment onto the digital object's surface, or even how light scatters inside a translucent object. This technology has become the gold standard in offline rendering applications, and more recently on high-end gaming rigs. But for the first time, diamond jewelry, sleek sports cars, metallic spacesuits, and so much more can reach photorealistic quality on mobile devices in real time. Ray tracing is now in the hands of select developers and partners and will launch in Lens Studio next year. Tune into our product sessions throughout LensFest to go deeper into Lens Studio, Camera Kit, and Lens Cloud Remote Assets. With such a large tool chest of advanced technologies, there's an endless number of combinations to unlock useful AR, like for learning, shopping, wellness, and play. Who better to help me showcase the work of the Snap AR community 
than Joe Darko, our global head of AR developer relations. Hello, I'm Joe Darko. We know that a barrier to getting started with Lens Studio and the Snap AR platform is just knowing where to start and the best resources for you. There are two main ways to learn all about Snap AR, right on our website and right in Lens Studio. We've made it easy to learn through courses, video tutorials, and resources on our new Learn page. Here, you can check out the beginner course to learn what you need to get started. Find your way around Lens Studio and build your first lens. Or if you've already found your footing, check out our intermediate course on developing fashion and try on lenses. You will also find our monthly live streams hosted by expert AR developers from around the world who share their creation tips and tricks. Check the Learn page often. We're adding new courses and resources regularly. Back in Lens Studio, check out over 100 templates based on complexity level, categories of what you're looking to build, or search for them by name. They are a great shortcut in your creation process and can also be customized and combined to build more robust experiences like a multiplayer AR game. Lens Studio's home screen also links right to guides and documentation that launch with each update. And finally, find your way to the forum and ask specific questions and get advice from other creators and developers. There are endless resources to help you build your first or next project. While gaining new skills is always part of the process, we invite you to join our vetted network of top AR developers, creators, and partners building with Lens Studio. Snap Lens Network members represent the heart of Snap AR. They are Lens Studio experts, community leaders, and passionate about the future of augmented reality. The Snap Lens Network supports their creative and technical development and helps grow their portfolio with paid brand opportunities and experimental projects. Network members also get early access to new tools and the product team members build in them and a verified Snapchat profile to reach more Snapchatters with their lenses, stories, and more. Take Tanishka Satsuraju, who has grown their skills, community, and career through the Snap Lens Network after joining just one year ago. The credibility of the network helped Tanishka to secure creation opportunities for the entertainment industry, consumer brands, and even the Indian government. Now, it's your turn. Apply to join on the Snap AR website today. And in the meantime, I'm excited to introduce a new opportunity to jumpstart your creativity and get your hands on our latest tools. Push the boundaries and possibilities of AR through our new Lensathon, a global remote hackathon challenge for you and a few teammates to create the future of AR now. This Lensathon is all about you or your team's combination of technical chops and wild creativity to build the most advanced AR experiences available anywhere. There's a total price pool of $200,000. The top ranked team will take home $40,000. In fact, we will award 30 entrants with prize money. And if money is not your motivator, we have some fun surprises in store for some of our top winners too. The Lensathon kicks off today and is open through January 31st. We will hold a series of workshops as refreshers on some of the most powerful technology that can help catapult you or your team to the top. Check out the website and register today. Education and opportunities to innovate create a strong foundation for building a career, and from building a career, you can build a business. And now, please welcome Sophia Dominguez to hear how developers are already building strong businesses on the Snap AR platform. Thanks, Joe. I'm Sophia Dominguez, the Director of AR Platform Partnerships and Ecosystem. The sheer volume of people using AR throughout their daily lives, coupled with the technical advancements that make lenses so immersive, has caught the attention of brands and businesses. In turn, that's inspired more entrepreneurs and teams to begin building their businesses directly into the camera. Recently, Creator Marketplace member Mousepack 
teamed up with ESPN to build a lens that mimics the legendary pick of the week moment on ESPN's college game day show. Each week, Snapchatters had six matchups to pick from, and LensCloud persistent storage was used to track results throughout the season. Sports fans could share their team spirit by wearing the mascot head from their favorite teams, celebrate their wins, and have fun with teammates and rivals alike. From stadium stands to the silver screen, HBO Max unleashed the iconic dragons in AR to celebrate House of the Dragon. Our global network leveraged Lens Studio's location-based AR tools, letting dragons soar over landmarks in more than 10 countries. Clara Baku let a dragon descend on London's Tower Bridge, swooping around the landmark spires. Her mastery of VFX adds smoke and embers to the fiery scene and sinister shading to the dragon. Check out HBO Max's Snapchat profile to see which dragons can be spotted in your city. Developers are also bringing amazing AR experiences to concert stages. On the music scene, Live Nation worked with a number of AR agencies to enhance fan experiences at some of Live Nation's largest festivals. Play brought Rufus to life at Bonnaroo, and Go Spooky lit up the sky with Rolling Loud's iconic punks characters. SnapLens Network members are building AR experiences for businesses through the creator marketplace. Take Paper Triangles, an AR studio that's been in the creator marketplace since it launched. In 2021, Paper Triangles made nearly $4 million building lenses for brands. In fact, they've worked with over 100 clients, from makeup looks for Sephora to shoe try-on for Crocs. In collaboration with the footwear brand, Snapchatters could visualize and customize an AR pair of clogs, becoming one of the studio's most successful lenses with about 3 million views. Apply to join the Creator Marketplace on our website and tune into our career development sessions on building your business and finding brand partners. As we transition from the early days of AR, we've heard your feedback to explore new business models beyond building lenses for clients. We're experimenting with a small group of creators and developers to build lenses with power-ups, AR items, or extra tools that Snapchatters can redeem with tokens. Phil Walton is dressing up the famed potato lens with an array of accessories. Now, Snapchatters can purchase new looks right in the lens. Jevels lets you create your own signature style with customizable beaded earrings. Write your name, or a custom message to your friends. The Booth by Bryant Lens offers a premium mode, letting Snapchatters customize colors, grain, brightness, contrast, and more. You can now find lenses with these capabilities in the Lens Carousel and Lens Explorer. We're shaping this capability to explore new ways to earn money, building compelling lenses from self-expression and fashion to games and entertainment. We're excited to discover the long-term potential of digital goods alongside you. Visit our website to apply for both of these new pilot programs. Ghost, our AR studio focused on AR product development, offers funding and support to monetize your lenses on Snapchat. Developer teams and companies can apply for grants across many verticals, including education, health and wellness, fashion and retail, gaming, and more. Ghost Fellows work closely with the Snap team to turn breakthrough experiences into fully fledged AR products. If you're looking to build a long lasting AR business, check out the Ghost application process on our website today. Beyond Snapchat, mobile app developers can increase engagement and strengthen their business through Snap's AR tools. Through Camera Kit, Snap's AR SDK, you can distribute the AR experiences you've built in Lens Studio into third-party applications. Take in C2. They're an AR-powered civic engagement app that takes proposals out of City Hall and layers them onto the real world to democratize the urban development process. Through Ghost, they built a lens featuring a proposal in Midtown New York City to teach residents about the plan, different development scenarios, and land use implications. The lens was viewed more than 150,000 times on Snapchat, enhancing and diversifying participation in city planning. 
Request access to the Camera Kit Beta on our website to explore how AR can empower your business. We're also evolving how your app's community can share important moments. If you're a mobile app developer, Creative Kit has always offered your audience a seamless one-tap sharing experience from your app directly to their friends and family on Snapchat. With the new Creative Kit lenses, you can enhance this sharing experience and drive downloads right from Snapchat. They establish a direct API connection between your app and the lens, so your community can share their latest updates through an AR experience. Our first partner, Strava, is using Creative Kit lenses to give their users the ability to post a video with information about their recent activity and their friends on Snapchat and directly in the Strava app. We believe that as more developers like you build strong mobile AR businesses, will accelerate towards our wearable future. Our ambition is that AR can be even more natural through lightweight glasses, letting you use your hands to interact with AR in the world and prioritizes the real people and real places around you over a pixelated version of them. Over the past two years, hundreds of developers from 30 countries have experimented with spectacles, building hundreds of lenses right in Lens Studio and exploring use cases from games to learning to fitness and wellness. Fight monsters with your friends in Wan Duel 3 or look up to the sky and say what constellation you want to see. Through our AR software and hardware, developers are leading the way from handheld to hands-free. We've already learned so much by collaborating together and we're continuing to invest in our long-term vision of AR. Over time, we'll give new versions of our glasses to developers and teams to play with, helping us build lenses that people can use on spectacles, but also on smartphones today. If you are passionate about building products for the future of spectacles, apply to the Spectacles Developer Program on our website. We're excited about all that's possible in AR today. Inspired by the AR experiences you've built for millions of Snapchatters with our tools and we're committed to pushing the AR industry forward alongside you. We invite you to become a part of this community, uplevel your skills, and build your business on the Snap AR platform. Thanks so much for joining us, and we can't wait to see what you create next. We know HBO for this amazing movies and series and House of the Dragon is no exception. To be able to work in this out of home experience is such a full circle moment because we can bring a little bit of Westeros to, to real life in real time. The 3D custom landmark experience let us create our own imagination and bring elements into life using these minor details. The place that I chose is the monument to Visconti Mawa. I thought that this could be the perfect place in Rio to bring this lens life. The place that you're at drives the experience. It drives and incentivizes the activity, the recording of the dragon moving around the bridge up in the sky near their homes. That's sort of what I want to see with, with custom landmarkers, not just for movies, but different genres of custom landmarkers. Working with custom landmarkers was fun. This was my first one. Uh, I walked down to the pier, pulled out my phone, took a quick scan of the location, and we were able to import it directly into Lens Studio. Custom landmarkers give you the ability to create unique effects for different locations, and those different locations lend themselves to different experiences, experiences that you can tailor to the community. Lens Studio has been my main tool for like over three years now, so it was super easy for the 3D team to get started with the landmarker mesh, and we could position and resize the dragon uh, perfectly that way. I'm on Cloud9 because like I never imagined getting uh, to work with the actual dragons from the series. I'm like a huge, huge fan of the franchise itself. And uh, when uh, the launch happened and I seen all the different lenses, I was like, wow, this is amazing. Like dragons everywhere, like wow.
I need to know everything Who in the what and the where I need everything Trust me, I hear what you're saying But act like it's new what you're telling me I'm curious, George, I hop in the Porsche It's five and a horse, I'm ready for war I'm coming for throws to turn to a ghost I need to know everything now you be surprised at the info you get is by letting them talk, so I'm letting them talk. Gotta keep quiet, maneuver in science, then let them in talk up their body, another one body, that's just how it go. I got some secrets, I'm shaking the game so they stay on their toes. Stay in your lane, I to stay on the go. I can't play with the pros and act like a rookie, so they overlook me. They not double up again, none of their nose. None of them cold, they just got lucky but never adapted. So I'm to the one if it's coming to blows. My enemies cutting it close. I let them think that they got me, but what do you know? I had them beat before we ever spoke. I'm ready for smoke. I need to know everything, who in the what and the where I need everything Trust me, I hear what you're saying, but act like it's new what you're telling me I'm curious, George, I have got that Too small, I got big dreams. You just starting, I'm way ahead at the end scenes. Started reading and dodging all of the quick schemes. Money like your Spotify, boy, I got 10 streams. And I'm still looking for more. My people, they got a sore. I'm putting that on the Lord. Ain't accepting, ignore. Just kicking down all the doors. Guarantee you, boy, if I ask for it, it's got to be real big. I 
I gotta make it just for my kids and for their kids, just kids. That's wealth years and years. Promise my brother, soon as he out and finish this bid, we finna do it bigger than anybody ever did. The odds is real big, job that's real big. Satan trying a little, my God is real big. Stayed up on the grind on the cars is real big. I gotta do it big, the only way that I can live. And I promise I'm trying to, before you count me out, homie, let me remind you, they was blocking the shine, now I think it's my time to, careful them dollar signs, like lights, they'll blind you, let me rewind to, back when I was broke and I couldn't acquire two cents, and now I got two rents, they was sleeping on me, homie, must have got too big, call my phone, I'll be like, who this, damn right, hell yeah, I'm brand new, smell like can too, I'm fresh forever like can food, try and tell me what I can't do, I wanna see the world, my vision on Shamu, that mean I got goals that's real big, foes that's real big, y'all offer too little, sorry, my soul is real big, coming into the ring with blows that's real big, I gotta do it big, that's the only way I can live, I gotta do it big, I gotta do it big, I gotta do it big, gotta do it big, that's the only way to live. I gotta do it big. I gotta do it big. I gotta do it big. Gotta do it big. That's the only way to live. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Take one. Welcome to Lensfest. Thank you so much for this award. It's an honor to be recognized. We're thrilled to win this award. <laughs> I love the future so much. <laughs> Senior Director of Advancement at the ComCom -Com Museum, and my job is to make this museum accessible to everyone. We know through AR we can do that. Hi, my name is Hart Woolery. I'm the founder of 2020 CV. My company builds augmented reality experiences. Pac-Man was honored as an inductee in 2020. We've been working with Bandai in various ways to sort of continue on his legacy and his relationship with the museum. The main feature that this lens uses is world tracking. We use that to project the game on top of the playing surface. The inspiration behind this lens was building something using the original Pac-Man game. I think AR brings a lot of new visual effects into the real world. Now we're able to democratize these visual effects so that anybody can use them rather than just a movie studio producing it in Hollywood.
Hi everyone, thanks for being here. My name is Mike Boland and I'm Chief Analyst of Artillery Intelligence and Editor-in-Chief at AR Insider. And in that role, I spend a lot of time looking at the ways AR can transform life, work, and business. So over the next 10 to 15 minutes, I hope to go over where we are now in AR's life cycle, where we're headed next, and what does that all mean for lens creators who are the fuel for what we call the augmented age. So let's jump right in, starting with where we are today in this AR journey. So I like to look at historical parallels, and I started my career around the time of the dot-com boom and bust, which some of you with gray hair like me may remember. And whether or not you were there, we often characterize that period as overblown expectations for the transformational impact of the web and e-commerce. But when looking back at that period in jest, we often forget that all of those high-flying projections actually ended up coming true, and some were even exceeded but not until three to five years after everyone expected and in slightly different forms. And I think that's where we sit today with AR, with lots of growth still to come. And it hasn't had a boom and bust cycle that's as pronounced as the dot-com bubble, but there have been some ups and downs. Regardless, AR will be life-changing and represent a new visually oriented way that we interface with the world around us, enlivening it with digital content for work and play and social connection. Now, to wrap some numbers around that claim, Artillery Intelligence projects there were 836 million global AR users last year, growing to 1.7 billion by 2026. And to put that into perspective, that outer year figure is about 21% of the world's population, which is a huge number, but also represents ample room to grow into. And the impact won't just come from usage, but how that translates to business opportunity. So for example, one of the most active and revenue generated generating segments in AR today is brand marketing. So demonstrating products with greater dimension resonates with brand marketers who've spent most of the past two decades confined to tiny boxes in mobile banner ads. And AR lets them break out of those confines and literally think outside the box by letting consumers visualize products in their full 3D glory on faces and spaces, as I like to say. Now, beyond creative juices, AR's appeal in marketing lies in its measurable business outcomes. So AR marketing, such as sponsored lenses, demonstrates real performance relative to 2D benchmarks. So we're talking everything from upper funnel engagement, such as dwell times of up to five minutes per activation, to lower funnel action, such as tripling e-commerce conversion rates. And though there's been a great deal of adoption and excitement among brand marketers for all these reasons, we've barely scratched the surface. According to Artillery Intelligence, 3.3 billion will be spent this year on AR ad placements such as sponsored lenses. But once again, to put that into perspective, that's half a percent of the 738 billion spent globally every year on advertising. So the good news is that we have lots of headroom to grow into. And as that gap closes, astute lens creators will be in high demand, as we'll get into in just a bit. Moving on to our next topic, where are things moving next? And I'd like to stick with that theme of headroom for AR adoption among brand marketers. And there are a few ways that that will play out. So one, going back to some historical examples, marketing technologies among brands tend to follow common adoption patterns. So we first see early adopters that eagerly pick up emerging tech and start to develop best practices and validate its effectiveness. And that's what we're seeing now from AR adoptive brands today, from Puma to Prada. But as that adoption gradually escalates, it reaches a tipping point when it flips from a nice to have to a need to have. It becomes table stakes, and brands that don't offer things like virtual try-ons will be seen as lacking something, and they'll lose business because of it. And think of that like digital images in e-commerce today. It's hard to imagine a day when online shopping didn't include product images from every angle, but that was once the case. And just like it eventually reached ubiquity, the same will happen with AR as competitive pressure gradually ratchets up that brand adoption. So there will also be macroeconomic drivers. So to address the elephant in the room, we're in an economic downturn, and advertising and marketing budgets are usually among the first things to be cut during such periods. But 
What often gets cut is legacy media as brands are forced to rethink their marketing mix. And conversely, emerging and performant formats actually fare well as they get the chance to shine when marketers are open to try new things and form new habits. And to throw another historical lesson at you, this is precisely what happened with search advertising in the mid 2000s and social advertising after the late 2000s financial crisis, both inflected during these periods when everything was sort of shaken up. So what does this all mean for creators and developers? In short, as AR adoption ratchets up among brand marketers, they'll need lots of creative talent. So creators and developers will hold all the cards and will be in high demand. And this reminds me of the value that was bestowed on web and app developers over the past decade. It turned out to be a heck of a career choice. And that's where we now sit with AR creation. It'll have not only lots of job security, but lots of leverage. In other words, job markets are all about supply and demand. And when supply is low and demand is high, in this case for a flood of AR creation needs that we project, the price goes up. And that price translates to Lens developers' income. And we're already seeing that. A few examples we've tracked include Lens developers that are making anywhere from 750,000 to 1.2 million per year at the high end. And in most cases, they got started simply by creating lenses as a hobby and a passion. And from there, they refined their skills and caught the eyes of brand marketers who reached out with lucrative offers. Now today, lens developers are luckier because there are more and more tools baked into developer platforms like Lens Studio. So you can showcase your work and build a portfolio and refine your skills. And in some cases, there are even networking tools that play matchmaker in talent marketplaces for AR projects. So take advantage of those tools. It's not only about getting matched up to paid work, but networking with other creators and gaining inspiration from them. Now I want to spend a little time drilling down on that concept of inspiration. It'll be critical because lens development standards and use cases will be a moving target. So in addition to fun and whimsical lenses, we see a trend towards more practical utilities for our everyday lives. So for example, we're talking about AR that helps you identify products in the world around you and buy those products on the spot, or find out more about the new restaurant that just opened up on your block by simply pointing your phone at it. And it'll include things like 3D navigation and finding the quickest way to your airport gate during a tight layover. And to draw on yet another historical lesson, this expansion from play to productive is a common pattern. So think about the web today. Its killer apps are mostly utilities. So we're talking search and email, weather and news. And these are not only useful functions, but they're high frequency activities. And we expect AR to follow that same path. But don't get me wrong, we'll also still have lots of fun and games in AR, just like we do today on the web. Now, as part of that expansion from play to productive, another key evolution is underway in AR, and that's the expansion from the front-facing camera to the rear-facing camera to augment the broader canvas of the physical world as opposed to just selfies. And this shift is important because it will unlock countless new use cases and creative lens formats. And I say that simply because the world, seen through your smartphone camera, is a big place. And beginning to explore that canvas with new lens formats and use cases is aligned with another key trend we're tracking, which is the looming arrival of consumer AR glasses. And that's simply because with AR glasses, all lenses are world-facing. Now, to be clear, the day when we're all wearing AR glasses is still years away for technological and cultural reasons. But as that day approaches, world-facing lenses will get lots of lead time to develop. So to put that another way, when AR glasses finally do arrive, smart creators and developers will already have had a few years from now until then to develop the right muscles and hit the ground running with world-facing AR killer apps. So what will those apps look like? The fun part is that we don't know yet. So just like when the iPhone first launched, no one conceptualized native apps like Uber and Foursquare and Spotify and Snapchat. It took a few years of living with that new form factor for that native thinking to really seep into the developer mindset. So we project the same thing to happen during this ongoing shift to world-facing AR over the next few years, and it'll be an exciting time. 
So I, for one, would like to see more AR apps that guide me through home improvement projects and testing out paint colors virtually, or tell me more about the actors in a movie I'm watching or the players in a football game I'm watching, or an AR visualization app that knows my entire wardrobe and can help me pick out what to wear to work every day and let me virtually try on and swipe through different outfit combinations. So altogether, the possibilities are pretty expansive, and these are just a few ideas from a non-creative pundit. We can't wait to see what more creative minds from the Lens Creator universe come up with. So thank you for watching. I hope this inspires you as you move into next year, and please enjoy LensFest. My name is Arthur Bouffard. I'm an AR developer. My background before I started building AR was in telecommunications engineering. Surf AR is a lens that teaches anyone how to surf. We use full body tracking to identify the different movements that a person might do when surfing. It was actually possible for me to convert one of my biggest passions into an augmented reality experience. What motivated me to build this lens was that I've always really been into surfing. It's been something that started when I was 11 years old. I figured augmented reality could be a good solution here to bring more people to learn how to surf. I think in general, AR can have a huge impact on the fitness industry. That could also add a lot of value because you would be able to visualize different workouts or different routes that you would potentially not be able to identify before.
everyone, I'm Lee Brown, and I'm a product marketing manager for Lens Studio. In this session, we'll be covering the latest technologies and AR capabilities available in Lens Studio. This year marks the fifth anniversary of Lens Studio, the development platform behind lenses that have been viewed more than five trillion times. Today, Lens Studio is used by over 300,000 creators to develop more than three million AR lenses that have changed the way people learn, play, shop, and express themselves in the world today. With various distribution options, you can build an AR experience that can be published on Snapchat, Spectacles, and other platforms and applications. The Snap AR ecosystem and economy for developer success thrives from the demand generated by brands and advertisers for creator services, as well as the creator monetization potential through building an audience on Snapchat. Over the past year, we've released new features that are powering the most innovative lenses on Snapchat and within Snap AR developers apps today. Let's take a look at these features as well as exciting improvements to our tracking, rendering, and scene interaction capabilities. The Snap AR ecosystem is built around the mission to integrate and overlay computing on the real world in a way that feels natural and useful. Lenses with more advanced technologies require more data and often larger assets. And we believe that creation shouldn't be limited or suffer from lower quality due to restricting size limits. That's why we've launched the Lens Cloud Remote Assets feature, which allows developers to store up to 25 megabytes of content or 10 megabytes per asset in the cloud and remotely fetch and load assets into the lens at runtime. With remote assets, you can include more content and larger assets in a lens, allowing you to create more complex and interactive experiences with the ability to host assets in the cloud. And soon, you can swap in new assets at any time, allowing you to refresh a lens and saving you development time. You can keep your AR experiences fresh and new throughout the year and bring people back to your existing content. The launch of remote assets unlocks more freedom and powers more interactive, high-quality lenses. We are so excited to see what you create with these new capabilities and their breakthrough functionality. Stay tuned as we continue to roll out high-impact features to the Lens Studio community. And now I'd like to hand it over to Charmaine to talk more about improvements we've made in Lens Studio over the past year. Hi, I'm Charmaine and I'm a product manager for Lens Studio. Beyond developing brand new features that consistently stretch the limits of what you can do with Lens Studio, we also spend a lot of time listening to our community and your feedback. At the end of the day, Lens Studio is yours as much as it is ours. So here are some big improvements we've rolled out to existing features over the past few months. Since we've released the Lens Studio physics engine, we've seen incredible ways that you've used physics to bring your ideas to life. And we have new updates to help you create true to life experiences that interact with the world you're building. First, we're introducing collision meshes. Instead of having to rebuild an entire object with primitive shapes in order to simulate collision, collision meshes take on the exact same shape as your object, guaranteeing accuracy. They are fully dynamic and work on everything from skinned meshes to bodies to faces. With this added precision, from the corner of this elephant's big ears to the tip of its little trunk, its entire body can all be detected during a collision. And to enable virtual objects to collide against the real-world environment, we've also included support for collision against your real-world collision mesh. Next, collision doesn't always look the same. If I walk into a brick wall, the effect would be different from me dipping my hands into a glass of water. One won't go through, and one will. Collision filtering allows you to define exactly that. It lets you control which colliders interact with one another, how they interact, and sometimes if they even interact at all. Every object has some mass and moment of inertia, which changes depending on the overall shape of the object and its density. We've added some general fixes so that more complex objects can have correct handling of their center of mass and inertia. Lastly, Ray casting allows you to project a ray into the scene to determine what's in its way. This is helpful, for example, when you're trying to determine if an object can traverse a path without running into another object. We've extended support for sweeping a primitive shape, such as a sphere, along a transformed path like what you see here. To finish this off, 
our awesome Snap Lens Network members, Naomi Rosmon, Kevin Kumar, their object. We've extended support for sweeping a primitive shape, such as a sphere, along a transformed path like what you see here. To finish this off, our awesome Snap Lens Network members, Naomi Rosmon, Kevin Kumar, and Maha El Dozeri helped us create physics templates so that you can get up and running with all these features as quickly as possible. As you may have seen, the shaken crying lenses have taken the social media world by storm, on and off Snapchat. These lenses quickly became fan favorites, so we turned them into custom components. Now, you can use them as turnkey solutions within your own lens projects. This means they just work with no additional project changes needed. And we're releasing new ones every month, including Smile, Tongue Twister, and ML Relighting. To save you development time, we added the ability to create and manage your own custom components directly in Lens Studio. Custom components offer you out-of-the-box solutions that can be integrated directly into your lenses. And they're designed to be modular components that you can open up in order to customize them to make your own. You can reuse your favorite components across your projects, whether they're created from scratch or forked off of existing ones we have in our asset library. Over the last year, improvements to location-based AR have enabled different innovative use cases around the world. Here, Hart Woolery built this lens called Racetrack Madness that uses Mesh Builder, World Tracking, World Mesh, and the physics engine we just talked about. What he loved about creating this lens was that it gave players complete freedom and resources to design a mini racetrack to their liking. It took a fair amount of work and math to get the tracks to curve naturally, but ultimately this lens shows another way that creators can build interactive lenses for the community to enjoy. More recently, we introduced the ability for you to export your 3D custom location meshes as OBJ files, so you can make precise edits to your scan meshes. And we've released Santa Monica and Los Angeles maps for city scale AR in Lens Studio, which are detailed, fully mapped 3D templates that creators can build large scale location AR experiences on. As more and more of you are developing Spectacles experiences, you'll need to rely more on hand interactions, and we want to make that as easy as possible. So we release two hands tracking to expand the set of available interactions and gesture possibilities you can build with both hands. This new functionality lets creators like Max Van Leeuwen and Lacey Minonen build out their awesome 3D modeling tool, Polygon Studio. This tool allows creators to build 3D models on the spectacles using only their hands. In the next year, we will be making cross-platform distribution within our ecosystem even easier. So you can use the same Lens Studio to build AR experiences, whether you're distributing it on Snapchat, Camera Kit, or Spectacles. We'll continue to invest heavily in our AR platform with new releases coming out every six weeks. As we continue to build out Lens Studio in 2023, we encourage you to share more about how you're using Lens Studio, including what's working for you and what's not. Join our community and let us hear from you through our Snap AR form. By providing feedback, we can be sure our teams are prioritizing the most impactful updates and innovative features on the Lens Studio roadmap. If you haven't downloaded Lens Studio yet or don't have the latest update, you can download it at ar.snap.com. And if you have any feedback or questions, make sure to leave them on our forum, community.snap.com. Be sure to follow us on Twitter to stay up to date on the latest with Snap AR. That's all. We hope you have an incredible day and thank you for building the future of AR with us. I think AR is great at letting you reimagine familiar spaces. 
I think AR has the potential to make our lives more playful and with that, help our sense of connection with each other. With traditional music making, there are barriers to entry. Hopefully AR removes some of these restrictions. I'm Kirsty Keach and the Lens project I've built is called Petiole. Petiole is an abstract AR sound object that explores melody and polyrhythms through playful interactions and simple hand gestures. It's inspired by nature and how flowers rotate to face the sun throughout the day. Lens Studio provided me with all the tools I needed to get up and running building lenses so quickly. Whether that was using my webcam to quickly iterate on hand gestures or being able to push new versions of the lens to my spectacles within seconds. It removes the friction in AR development, allowing me to focus on the bits that matter. Spectacles have been a great introduction to head-mounted AR. They allow me to see my lenses straight from Lens Studio and iterate rapidly on ideas. I was pleasantly surprised how well the hand tracking worked on the spectacles. The level of immersion it provides really helps ground the experience in a way I've not experienced before. I hope users feel creatively empowered by the lens. It doesn't matter what your musical background, anyone can build their own unique sound object within the lens. that we can dream of throughout the history of mankind. I feel like we can finally start experiencing things like the effects of magic spells, the way that humans have pictured it in the movie world, but in real time. My name is Violet Forrest, I'm a digital artist and creative technologist, and the name of my project is Glitter Hearts. My lens is a concept for an AR video game where you'd be able to walk around and talk to NPCs and they would give you side quests to collect items. So in my lens, there's a girl sitting on the floor and she tells you that her heart is broken and the quest is to help her fix the pieces. The development flow is really seamless working with Lens Studio and Snap provides a lot of creative example templates to start off with. There's no other program out there that mixes AR with state-of-the-art computer vision tools like object detection and hand tracking in a way for creators to experiment with. So the possibilities of what I can make are really exciting. My creative process has changed with the specs because now that I'm more familiar with all the features and technologies provided by Lens Studio, I can ideate quicker and now I can start thinking of AR as not just something you hold in your phone, but something that can be hands-free and more integrated in daily life. I think Lens Studio will empower creators in the future because you don't have to know how to code and that's really important for creator adoption with new technologies. It's also really powerful so the general public can have access to these innovative tools and help shape the way society adopts AR.
I'm Will G. I'm co-founder and CEO of Balti Virtual. We're a software studio focused on building augmented and virtual reality experiences. We started Balti Virtual a little over seven years ago. My co-founder David and I have been working together for over 25 years now, going back to the video game industry. So we used to build PC, Xbox, commercial video games together. We just got excited about where this technology is going and how fast it's evolving. And it's a perfect fit for what we've been doing for the last 25 years. So we started Balti to really build on that. But we created an experience called Buddy Brawl. With this lens, we were trying to accomplish a couple of things. We wanted to build a real-time gaming experience. We wanted to bring in people's Bitmoji characters to represent them. And we wanted to build something fun and interesting that was unique to AR. One of the big things that we did early with this lens was we focused on not just having a game that you could play on a tabletop, but really this game would interact with you, with your phone, where you were. There were things coming at your phone. You're using your phone as a slingshot. And so we really wanted to, to lean into that. With Lens Studio, we used the connected lens feature first and foremost. That enables creators to have a lens that connects two friends on Snap live, two or more, and kind of share information in real time. The Bitmoji support has been really huge. Initially, we started this with the idea that we wanted to personalize the experience in some way, whether that's just putting your face on a robot character or you know, allowing you to pick colors and things like that. But having the ability to pull in a full 3D Bitmoji with props and, you know, facial hair and hairstyle and everything just created the best possible player character for this game experience. Most of our company worked on this lens. It was about 10 people. For us, the development process started with a brainstorm. We sort of threw out every idea we could think of, of what could we build as a connected lens? What's an arcade experience that we can build? When we go to design an AR experience or game versus a traditional 2D game, we really look to focus on bringing out the best things that that platform offers. With AR specifically, it brings a couple of things. One, a really precise control input method. It's kind of moving around, giving you this almost magic remote into the world. It also creates a sense of wonder where you can mix the real world with the virtual world in a way that isn't possible in a 2D screen. So the future of gaming on Snapchat is really exciting. We've got a huge number of users that are using augmented reality every day to connect with their friends, to express themselves. And now there's this idea that people can connect to game to be competitive, and it really feels like the sky's the limit. My favorite part of being in the Snap Lens Network is just the peer group of creative, engaged people, and also the support from Snap itself. When we have a technical question, when we're trying to do something completely new, we've had a lot of instances where someone will help us get exactly the answer we need when we need it. The SLN community connected us to a lot of great potential creators that we can work with and collaborate with. It's also given us a great platform to promote our work and show it off to the world. We always focus on spending less time polishing and fine tuning up front and really just get something rough that people can play it with, they can iterate with, they can explore. And that's really given us the base of a great game to build on. Augmented reality opens up so many new dimensions of gameplay and creativity that we're still kind of scratching the surface of what's possible. لكن أحلى شيء أحبه في عملي كمصمم لعدسات الواقع المعزز إن كيف تحول الفكرة في ذهن أي شخص إلى واقع شبه ملموس السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته أخوكم في هذا المطلق معكم محمد الأسمر أنا مهد دوسري هاي ماي نيم إز إبراهيم مونا أنا 
أول مباراة أنا شفتها وأذكرها يعني وأنا صغير جدا يعني عام 1994 كانت مع بلجيكا من الذكريات الجميلة أيضا هدف سعيد العويران في مرمى بلجيكا الغرض من العدسات اللي راح أصممها تعزيز أجواء الحماس والإثارة عند المشجعين والاستمتاع بأجواء المونديال مي أن فهد ميد ذا لينسز يوزينغ سوفتير فور ذيس ستوديو طبعا فكرة العدسة الأولى هي تحويلك من جوك المحيط في الغرفة في العمل إلى جو الملاعب الحماس دائما ما أركز على تجربة المستخدم أثناء استخدام عدسة الواقع المعزز لذلك في كأس العالم اتهجت نفس الخطة بحيث أنها تقرب المستخدم من كأس العالم وتحث على مشاركة هذه التجربة مع الأهل والأصدقاء أتوقع الحماس في كأس العالم هذه المرة بيكون ما في له أي مثيل. I think World Cup 2022 in Qatar is special because this is the first time an Arabic country hosts this big event. من الأشياء اللي أتمنى يعرفها الناس عن ثقافتنا هي حسن الضيافة والكرم. كان عمان أو غيرها أنا فخور جدا إني من منطقة الشرق الأوسط اللي كل دولة فيها تتميز بطباعة خاصة ومصدر للإلهام والابتكار في تصميم العدسات. Through the World Cup and with our lenses, we are able to honor and celebrate it. Excited to be here to celebrate you, the global AR creator and developer community. Excited to be here with you, not only for the fifth annual Lens Fest, but also the five year anniversary of Lens Studio.
take one. Welcome to LensFest. Thank you so much for this award. It's an honor to be recognized. We're thrilled to win this award. <laughs> I love the future so much. <laughs> Welcome everyone. My name is Tyreek White and I'm a products manager here at Snapchat. In today's session, my colleague Elliot and I are going to show you how to use the powerful features within my lenses to improve your lenses and achieve repeatable success in Snapchat. We will cover the standard lens submission flow, including error reporting, community insights from fellow Snapchatters, and event insights to learn how people interact with the individual features within your lens. My Lenses is a tool that features everything from lens submission to error reporting and analytics. It's the primary way to see if your lenses are successful in Snapchat. Now, the most important part of having your lens seen by the Snapchat community is submitting it. So let's start there. Let's walk through the submission flow for a fitness lens I have called Obstacle Challenge. Within Lens Studio, fill out the lens name and select a hint if applicable to your lens. Be sure to also select front camera and rear camera to ensure your lens achieves optimal reach and performance on Snapchat. And when you're finished, click Publish Lens and you'll be directed to My Lenses to finalize your submission. After filling out additional sections and adding categories and relevant tags to your lens, which help increase your lens's visibility on Snapchat, you can click Submit Lens to kick off the lens testing process. Lens submission typically takes minutes to complete. If it takes longer than an hour, reach out to our support team for assistance. When you submit a lens, it goes through multiple testing steps, and if the lens fails submission, we provide error logs. 
I am super excited to share updates we've recently made to our error logging. And soon, you'll be able to access even more information to improve your lenses. We now provide more visibility into the stages of lens testing, more exposure to different types of lens errors, as well as a new UI to consolidate your logs. While the obstacle challenge lens I just submitted goes through the submission flow, I'll show you an example of what a rejection message looks like. You can tell a lens has failed when its status shows as rejected within My Lenses. If we click on My Rejected Lens and explore the logs, we can find more information on why it failed. In this case, I received the following error. Unfortunately, your lens obstacle challenge did not meet our minimum performance requirements during automated testing. Your lens's average active memory usage, or RAM, was 200 megabytes, and the maximum allowed value is 150 megabytes. This error message tells us that one of the assets included in the lens is too large to be distributed on Snapchat. So let's go back to Lens Studio to investigate. In my lens, I see that it's using multiple texture assets. I need to take a further look into these assets to determine the uncompressed size of each. So to find out more, I'll select each of them in the Resources panel and explore. It looks like I found the source. I can see the RAM usage for some assets is extremely large. Great news! Now, with our new Remote Assets feature, you can use the Lens Cloud service to host larger assets outside of the lens. For this session, however, I'll optimize the texture within my lens and resubmit it, but you can check out the session Leveling Up Your Lenses with Cloud Services on our new Remote Assets feature and see how to use it to lower your lens's RAM usage. And voila, the lens has now passed submission. You will receive an email if there are any errors and when your lens is live on Snapchat, so you always know where in the process your lens is, even if you haven't checked my lenses. With these latest improvements, you can now see new error messages that you could not before, including the types of devices your lens is failing on, and these new logs also offer more tips about how you should rework your lens to meet submission requirements. Now that your lens is on Snapchat and you have a better sense of how to use error logs to submit the perfect lens, what comes next? Well, that's the fun part. You can use the analytics within My Lenses to learn more about the audiences that engage with your lenses on Snapchat. You can also use analytics to create repeatable success within your lenses and grow your personal brand over time. Elliot is now going to show you how to get started on your path to success. Happy creating. Cheers, Tyreek. I'm Elliot Lewis, a software engineer here at Snap. My Lenses can help you take your lenses to the next level by giving you insight into how your lenses perform. Today, we're going to talk about two tools we've recently added to my lenses. Community audience can help you find your next audience, and event insights will help you better understand users' behavior when they actually use your lens. First, let's talk about community audience. We recently launched this tool to help creators understand the demographics of the lens user community while still protecting Snapchat data and keeping user data private. Imagine I'm a creator based in Paris, building lenses with content in French. I can see breakdowns of anonymized data from across our community, outlining the age, country, operating system and device models for our French-speaking Snapchatters who have consented to share. It also shows example of popular lenses within that audience that you can learn from and find inspiration. This can influence the type of lenses you may choose to design to get the highest reach for your creations. You can use these features to understand the types of devices your target audience uses most, like iOS or Android, so you can build your lens to meet your performance goals across all devices. Let's look back at the fitness lens we showed you earlier. We chose an obstacle course as our first activity because we know how many of our Snap team members regularly talk about their hiking and surfing habits. When we look at the analytics, we can see that our US audience engaged with it the most, but they only make up around 13% of our potential audience. We can see here in community audience the potential increase in engagement with this lens by including popular activities from all over the world. A great place to start would be to include activities popular in India, where there is a potential reach of 155 to 161 million Snapchatters. What activity would you add to this lens to drive engagement within your local community? Let's take a look at Event Insights, another new feature in My Lenses. Event Insights enables you to dive into how Snapchatters interact with your lens, giving you clues about how you can deliver higher quality engagements. Let's look at this gaming lens for an example of how to successfully make changes to your favorite projects. Here, I've created a lens called Cookie Clicker, which is a gaming lens built by the Snapchat team that allows you to collect points as you tap on the cookie. In this lens, you have five seconds to collect as many points as possible. I spent a few days creating this lens, and I'm excited about the engagement it will receive on Snapchat. However, when I publish the lens and look at the analytics, only 9.7 tap events are found per lens session, meaning the average user doesn't even end up playing the game as much as we'd like. I noticed this by viewing these analytics in my lenses after the lens submission. 
I spoke with some friends and brainstormed a few ideas, including adding additional activities to the lens to get people excited. After thinking about it, I decided to add more interactivity since this is a gaming lens, and I want users to feel highly engaged and have fun. Here's the new lens I created and resubmitted. After viewing my lenses again, we can see the jump in tap events per session. Now we see that users are tapping 18.2 times per session, which means they're really engaging with my game. Event Insights enables you to view actual data on the number of faces found and lost, objects of 3D objects, marker images tracked, screen taps, along with the number of multi-user sessions shared and joined. And all of this information is available by default. So if you use these lens features, you'll be able to see exactly how, when, and where the community interacted with them right in the My Lenses dashboard. We're constantly looking to identify new categories of events we can share with you in Event Insights. My Lens's powerful analytics are useful for all of our creator community. Here's what some of our top creators have said about how My Lenses helps them to iterate on their lens success. We check My Lenses statistics on a weekly basis to see performance and specific events that might be triggering some lens due to external trends. We also use it to learn which lenses work better and take that knowledge to improve our branded experience. Augustin Salaberry from Social Snack. Once I publish a lens, I check its analytics in my lenses twice a week to measure its performance and success. Before publishing the lens, I have a basic pre-campaign strategy in mind, which basically targets and hypothesizes on factors like the target's audience, location, gender, average playtime, and play-to-share ratio. After two weeks, I compare the hypothesis with the actual lens insights. From the comparison, I conclude and redefine the hypothesis. Pradeepa Anandi. To recap what we've covered today, My Lens is a powerful tool that includes everything you need for submission success and for learning how to build lenses your audience can engage with. My Lenses includes new enhanced error reporting, community audience, and event insights. Community and event insights are generally available today, and error reporting will be available soon. So follow us on Twitter at SnapAR for the latest updates. I encourage you to explore what you can learn about your creations. We can't wait to see your results. Happy creating. My name is Michael French. I'm an artist and designer in augmented reality. I created an education-focused lens called the Knowledge Pool. The Knowledge Pool is a location-based AR experience that lives at this physical fountain just outside of the Los Angeles Public Libraries. In the lens itself, I tried to explore a series of bite-sized educational activities. I started this lens with the custom landmarker template that allowed me to scan this fountain outside the library. I took pieces from the image marker template to use on the library card itself. AR and education in the future creates that kind of interchange point between analog learning and digital learning, but doesn't try to replace everything that is also powerful in, in that ecosystem. Excited to be here to celebrate you, the global AR creator and developer community. Excited to be here with you, not only for the fifth annual LensFest, but also the five year anniversary of Lens Studio.
Thermal Tavares. Kesachi from One Smoke Clears. Hi, my name is Kingsley, and I'm the founder of Kingsley. I'm Chanel, I'm from New York City, and I'm the creative director and designer for the brand Bet on Water. They hate when you elevate. They're stacking up losses, I'm handing them out, yeah, I had to go delegate. Made reached out to me at a time where I didn't have the resources to put on a new collection, but just kept sketching and sketching, and here we are. We will be showing Act 2 of Collection 1, which is unapologetic, but also at the same time, it's very subtle, it's still chic. This specific project is mostly based on how much we rely on technology. This collection is like a 1-800 call when smoke clears. They hate when you elevate. The process is to not stop working on something until I like it. It's like building a song. You erase bars and then put new bars in, so it's just like building. AR has given us the opportunity to fully communicate the world that we're trying to create. Not everyone could access clothing in real life, but if you could access it digitally, I think it can expand fashion. They hate when you elevate, elevate, elevate. They hate when you elevate. For all the dreamers out there, we can make those dreams turn into reality with AR. Hi, my name is Susanna Bastion, and I am co-founder and CEO of Javels. Javels is an NFT platform bringing jewelry into the virtual space. When we discovered the concept of virtual fashion, we knew that augmented reality can help us bring these beautiful designs, which exist virtually only, into real life and make it wearable in real time, which makes it even more creative and fun. Wearability is at the core of what we do, so that's why we use augmented reality, enabled by a snap and a snap camera, to make virtual fashion be worn for virtual platforms and social media. All designs are wearable for Zoom calls, Google Meet, YouTube videos. They adapt to your shape and everybody can wear it. So far, we have built 116 lenses, one of which is the Jubilee Crown. The Jubilee Crown has been developed in collaboration with the renowned designer Gary James McQueen and Kadeen James from The Immersive Kind. We have created this lens for people from all over the world to be included in the celebration of Her Majesty the Queen, and we have seen an amazing impact. Everybody from Japan to Mexico could try on the lens and could be in this way included in the celebration, so this was wonderful to see. When we built the lens in the lens studio, we use the head binding feature. An advantage with virtual designs is that a crown doesn't need to be round. So the crown is actually oval to fit the shape of the normal head. Right now we are experimenting with ray tracing, which is going to be included into the crown. 
We are also using air tracking to work on new lenses, so you can have various different earrings on your ear, just like the earrings I'm wearing right now, Javel's earrings. It adds more creativity and fun to the whole process. We collaborate with approximately 20 designers. These are 3D designers who are not really in the jewelry business, but also traditional jewelry creators. It's very interesting to collaborate with them because um, AR space and the entire virtual space is very new to them. But to acquire new types of customers, they um, want to explore this space and add something new into their portfolio. We also like to work with other experts from the Lens Studio Network. Our team is still very small, so we work with other experts to help us create these very realistic experiences. AR is totally affecting the fashion industry, and it's great to see that even during fashion weeks, bigger brands are using augmented reality on the runways. AR Triumphs is already enabling people to shop with more confidence that it's going to fit. We are already using the blockchain technology by tokenizing all our designs as NFTs. Right now we are working on possibilities to make certain parts of a lens purchasable, something which is going to change AR fashion. Snapchat has a huge audience of super engaged people. Building AR lenses for Snapchat has enabled us to discover our group of customers, but also adapt our products to what they really like and to bring innovation to the table. I'm looking forward to the day where I can wear my virtual jewelry and virtual accessories for the outside world. already changed the beauty industry in so many ways because now you can try on specific makeup products before you buy it. Look at this. What? I see everything being a lot easier and a lot quicker. You just go through these AR filters and you figure out what you like and you don't have to waste time shopping. You also don't have to buy five different shades online hoping that one of them will be the correct one. And when you're looking at a product online, you can't always tell if you're going to like it or not, but using these AR features, you are able to see exactly how that shade looks on your skin tone. But overall, the color, the blendableness <laughs> is the exact same as in real life. I tried it myself. Snap partnered with Allure to bring Best the Beauty to life. With this partnership, the Snap generation can virtually try on Allure's top beauty products of the year. With Snap AR, you become the model.
Hey, if you're watching this video right now, it means you're at LensFest and you know something that most of the world haven't quite yet figured out. And that is that augmented reality is gonna change every aspect of our lives. When we move from the QWERTY keyboard being the primary input to technology to the camera and overlaying information onto the world. My name's Yusuf Omar. I've been a journalist for about 11 years, covered war zones, used to work at CNN International. Today, I'm the co-founder of Scene. We have 10 shows and we use augmented reality to guide citizens through the storytelling process. And I think whether you are an investor, a lens creator, any kind of individual organization, understanding which company or platform is likely to be successful in this augmenting computer future is really important because you wanna invest your time and your efforts behind that platform. And I think whichever platform is gonna win is gonna need the royal flush. They're gonna need five cards. And I'm gonna share with you what I think those are. The first is they need an operating system built around the camera. That is the 10. And when I look at Snap, they have hundreds of millions of people who every day open into the camera. I've worked with newsrooms around the world and we've actually been able to use that camera to enable people to tell stories in the most incredible ways. I mean, a few years ago, we were working with rape survivors in India and we were able to use lenses to help hide their identities and empower them to still tell their stories. So I think as an operating system built around the camera, Snap own that card. They really are worlds ahead and that's why they have the 10. But of course, it's not just about an operating system, right? You also need great apps. And when you look at Lens Studio, it's like a Ferrari and most of us are driving it in first gear. You know, we haven't really unlocked the full potential, but it's an incredibly powerful tool. My team's been able to use it to create baby fairy. My wife is very pregnant, so we're able to track the progress of our firstborn soon to be, hopefully. Uh, we've been able to create environmental experiences here in Australia, where we have this koala bear named Albert who navigates you through uh, space and time. We've created spectacles experiences so Muslims can understand the Quran in English and obviously hear it in Arabic. Really, really interesting thing. Developing amazing products, but of course you need a really good developer tool and Lens Studio is just amazing in that respect. I think the next important card is a queen. We all know that this future of augmented reality is not gonna be on a phone and that's a really good thing. Who wants to look at the world like this and this? This is so much friction with the internet. It's most likely gonna be wearables, right? We're gonna be rocking something and being able to see information overlaid onto the world. And who knows, maybe I'm reading my script right now using these. And I've been wearing cameras on my body for like 10 years now. Um, but since 2016, I've been wearing spectacles. And you know, they've come such a long way from one camera to being waterproof, to two cameras, to now having a full head-mounted display, right? A computer two centimeters away from my optical nerve, really putting the internet as close to my brain as possible and providing me with both creative experiences, like being chased by a zombie, but also like utility experiences. And I think in terms of like this combination of like really cool design, but also really like resilient, tough hardware, Snap have done some amazing work in that, in that hardware space. So that for me is the queen, but the king is the most important. Whichever company is going to get billions of people around the world to wear wearables, they're going to have to be so focused on privacy. For me, the king is privacy because you get such valuable data, right? And such meaningful and sensitive data when people are wearing computers and cameras on their faces. You really need to trust that that platform is going to use your data in a sensitive way and, and really going to protect your data. And Snap have built an ethos and principles around the protection of data and really looking after their community as their first priority from day one. And I fundamentally believe that when we move into this wearable space, with trust being such an important card, Snap are really worlds ahead in terms of building trust. And trust doesn't come overnight, right? It's like a relationship. It takes years and years to build. The final card, the ace, is education. When the internet came out, people didn't really know why they'd need it. When mobile phones came out, people didn't really know why they'd need that. And as augmented reality starts the mainstream and we expect by 2025, 75% of the world's population are gonna use it on a regular basis, people don't really understand what they're gonna do with the camera. 
that education is gonna come from partners. It's gonna come from this community who are at scale gonna be showing people the incredible experiences that they can have that really create meaningful and positive changes in their lives. But education is such an important part. And when I look at that full uh, royal flush, right from the operating system to the apps, to the hardware, um, right through to trust and of course education, I think Snap hold all those cards. And that's why I'm betting the farm on the platform. Especially as a small business, I don't have the flexibility or resources to be trying to do augmented reality on tons and tons of different platforms and trying to do it well. I've got to really look at the landscape and, and take a bet on who I think is going to win. And I think Snap's going to win. I'm really excited about everything this community is doing. I love the way that we all share so much and help each other out. And I think, you know, in the same way that there were billion dollar businesses built in Web2 around ride sharing and booking hotels, there are going to be massive organizations that are going to be built on this augmented computing future. And they're going to come out of this community. Take care. Enjoy LensFest. Thanks so much. We're excited to be here to celebrate you, the global AR creator and developer community. Excited to be here with you, not only for the fifth annual LensFest, but also the five-year anniversary of Lens Studio. so much technical innovation in the tools we've turned over to the community. So I'm excited to join you to break down how developers around the world have been using Lens Studio to build really advanced and impactful AR experiences. Awesome, let's get started. I love to see examples where AR helps people learn something new. Harry Banda is a developer based in Zambia, and he built a puzzle game to introduce coding concepts to teens and adults alike. Now you're talking my language. From a technical perspective, Harry used our scripting engine to write complex game logic, which powers the interactivity of the game's 10 levels. Right, and each of the levels builds on a previous lesson, moving from basic sequences to Boolean logic to more advanced loop commands. I also like the virtual UI that lets players input commands and run the program. This was created in Lens Studio using our UI framework. I hope this lens inspires a new generation of engineers. I hope the same too. While Harry's Lens was an educational game, we've got another playful experience that will get you moving. There have been great football lenses that use hand tracking or just the base interactions. But until recently, we had not seen a football lens that uses foot tracking technology to kick the ball. And beyond foot tracking, this lens also incorporates body tracking to wear your team's jersey and helmet, as well as physics to make the ball fly realistically between the goalposts. There's also fun gameplay elements like power-ups and moving goalposts, which required game engine design. This lens was built by Pradeepa Anandi, and I have to say, the kick is good. Next up, we're going from the football field to the weight room with a visual gym assistant. Beam AI built a lens that identifies gym equipment and recommends exercises to target specific areas of the body using the equipment. This lens represents the power of augmented reality by providing information based on real-world objects around you. Exactly. Beam AI built their own ML classification model to detect equipment, including barbells, dumbbells, kettlebells, medicine balls, and an exercise mat. The custom models were built using Teachable Machine and TensorFlow Lite. And then the lens could recognize those pieces of gym gear to recommend a relevant exercise. They added 3D characters that demonstrate the selected exercise and compress them with our recently released Draco tools. It's awesome to hear that the team also thought about how our voice ML tools would let Snapchatters say what they wanted to work on in the gym, too. I'm really impressed with how this lens uses advanced AR capabilities to build a robust AR experience that will bring people back again and again and could work well on Snapchat or another mobile app today or optimize for hands-free experience on Spectacles. 
All right, one more lens to try on. The Beyond Studio team in Amsterdam builds Hybrid Jacket, an immersive futuristic fashion trying experience. They designed a series of three jackets inspired by reusable materials and recyclable plastics, each accompanied with a whole scene that truly fits the vibe of each garment. The jackets and roomscapes are not only visually stunning, but so technically advanced. The portal rooms required coding to display the room from the portal door without having anything behind the door. And Beyond Studio mastered the art of directing a user flow between the front and world-facing cameras. The feature of fashion has arrived. There's so much that's possible through Snap AR today. We know that these technically advanced, sophisticated lenses often require a whole team to bring them to life. We're working on a series of improvements to make it easier for multiple people to work together in Lens Studio as a team, such as refactoring our project structure to play nicely with version control. And over time, we'll bring you tools that let you customize your workflows so you can work faster together. That's awesome news. Sounds like your team has a big year ahead.
everywhere I go. The people really wanna know who I is and who I be. They stop and stare when they see me. If I said it once, no need to repeat. Run up on me, watch you fall to your knees. Tip my hat when it's time for the kill. Ain't no beast when you're really real. I am the boss, I am the dawn. I am the one they call Lucky Charm. Got my own shit, I don't need your farm. Life was so hard, it made me weak. Built to last, this girl ain't weak. Sturdy and still when I plant my feet. Got it out the melody, I was racks in my sleep. Look to God, he supplies my needs. Endless faith is what brought me. Next level prosperity. Silent power moves is what I'm giving. They love to hate the world. Respect her rule. Smile on my face. What in my place? But at gully on cyber face. Let's pump brakes. Let's be frank. Running after him when you're the chase. You are the catch and he's the net. How quick we do we all forget to honor these small policies, my darling. You are the empress queen. Man respect or he'll neglect. You are the wind beneath his wings. You are the season. You are the reason why this world can breathe. Giving sons eyes to see and daughters dreams to believe. Anything less less than the best for you is high treason, queen. Hurry up quick. El head face coming soon. Sit up straight when she enters the room. Be enthused, but don't look too amused. This is her queendom. Please respect her rule. Hurry up quick, and half is coming soon. Sit up straight when she enters the room. Be enthused, but don't look too amused. This is a queendom.
race. I gotta pick up the pace. They throwing shade, but I'm gone. You gotta keep it a box in my face. Taking the gang out of space. It's best if you stay in your place. They hating on all of my songs. Uh, I don't know what can I say. They throwing shots, but I'm saved by his grace. God is the shoot, I'm the lace. Running around, got me stoned. Man, feels like I'm stuck in the maze. Shoot at the opposite the case. They sipping only nine saves. I can do it on my own. Yeah, they judging me off my mistakes. This floor is so heavenly. Most of my friends and a friend of me. They tryna bring out the beast. I'm batting a thousand, my game is elite. I'm running around in the streets. They tryna catch up, but they still can't compete. I thought they got in my sleep. He told me keep going, cause you gotta leave. Count it up, all the brothers came through, then we added up. They was asking me questions, I had to dub. I've been running with God, I just leveled up. They won't speak to my face, got that in the door. They've been punning me on like I'm one of those. I can see why they hate, that just ain't me. Tell me a place that I can't go. I don't think they get it, they don't understand. I'ma do it for my homies and my fans. They don't see the vision, they just see the band. Eyes on the money like a rubber band. That is number one, I follow his command. You can try it, you won't get a chance. I'ma keep on going till I can. And I buy them by his plan. Yeah, yeah. They tryna hit me, I'm running the race. I gotta pick up the pace. They throwing shade, but I'm gone. You gotta keep it a box in my face. Taking the gang out of space. It's best if you stay in your place. They hating on all of my songs. Yeah, I don't know what can I say. They throw me shots, but I'm saved by his grace. God is the shoot, I'm the lace. Running around, got me stoned, man. Feels like I'm stuck in the maze. Shoot at the opposite case. They sipping only nine saves. I can't do it on my own, yeah. They judging me off my mistakes. Silver step into the play, you bet I'ma hit it. What I'm doing in this game, I did in a scrimmage. Rappers wanting all this beef and burning up bridges. D done they dinner with pain, they just wanna admit it. Won't stop till I get it. Speed it up when I'm winning. It's silver and under fine, um, period. No sin. Stay trying to give me the fit. And I'ma say Jesus and risk it. Treasure in heaven, generation. What I'ma pass the baton on my jits. Uh, had to make sacrifices for this. I can fake, had to cut off some friends. Vision late ever since the beginning. Go get the bad, then bring it in. Every L was a lesson you did. Had a nest, had to handle the biz. How about a watch him call it? And it's chilling right over the fridge. They tryna hit me, I'm running the race. I gotta pick up the pace. They throwing shade, but I'm gone. You gotta keep it up, bucks in my face. Taking the gang out of space. It's best if you stay in your place. They hating on all of my songs. Uh, I don't know what can I say. They throwing shots, but I'm saved by his grace. God is the shoot, I'm the lace. Running around, got me stoned, man. Feels like I'm stuck in the maze. Shoot at the opposite the case. They sipping only nine saves. I can do it on my own, yeah. They judging me off my mistake. To the end zone, and they still can define me. Man, you know where to find me. I'm trying to get me a Grammy so I can dedicate it to my granny. Look, tell me what's the vibes, what's the moves. Yeah, I just hit on my key for the jewels. Yeah, ain't no captain, I'ma tell the truth. I've been running for so long, it's hard to lose. Yeah, deal, be my source. Uh, Christian, like the York. Yeah, I can't start when I'm far, I just get back up. Yeah, I've been quiet all along on my TV toes. Yeah. To myself, I just give and go. Yeah, I just turn my L's into W's. Yeah, I just told my sins. Yeah, I'm no true. Yeah, stay in your lane, don't you pick and choose. I can't waste my time, I got a lot to lose. To the game that we all on, they was doubting us all along. Now we charting in Hong Kong, what competition they all gone. Yes, stress, play the game like it's chess. We next, that's a check, over stripes. Yeah, yeah. Tell me what's 
the vibes? What's the moves? Tell me what's the vibes? What's the moves? Don't be afraid of the dark. Be careful with stars. Not every light is gonna guide you, baby. Don't let it rain on your spark. Keep it close to your heart. All of the pressure's gonna drive you crazy. Cause you rise to the madness. In the morning, it's all gonna vanish. Don't be afraid of the dark. Be careful with stars. Not every light is gonna guide you. Yeah, when I blow up, I'ma soar high like Peter Pan. In real life, be living out my dreams. If I'm waking up, it's in a foreign land. Whole wrist covered up in ice. Dealership, never ask the price. I hit the molly ball with my dogs. Yeah, I swipe it once without thinking twice. Cause this what I was made for. Man, I know this what I came for. On a big stage, couple thousand people, and they do whatever I say so. Have chicks that color the rainbow. Yeah, chains on me like Django. Be a long way from my tank low. Cause my Tesla charge for them bank rolls. And I'm grinding. Money on my mind and I'm headed to the top I won't stop until I find it Write my name in diamonds But all these lights are blinding I wonder is it worth it Feel like I'm losing my mind Yeah, remind me Don't be afraid of the dark Be careful with stars Not every light is gonna guide you, baby Don't let it rain on your spark Keep it close to your heart All of the pressure's gonna drive you crazy Cause you ride I blew up, everybody telling me that I'm the man Same people gave me the finger They reaching out for me to give a hand In a different city and my pills came Cause this tour don't happen, I feel pain And the girl with me says she down for life She don't even know what's my real name Just try to get what she came for And ain't nothing I got safe though Cause when the money go wild, everybody get a piece But it's looking like I ain't on the payroll Got a big house made out of Play-Doh And a plastic crown for my halo But still a long way from my tank low Cause my Tesla charge for them bank rolls And I'm grinding, money on my mind and I'm headed to the top, I won't stop until I find it Write my name in diamonds, but all these lights are blind And I wonder, is it worth it, feel like I'm losing my mind, yeah, remind me Don't be afraid of the dark, be careful with stars Not every light is gonna guide you, baby Don't let them rain on your spark, keep it close to your heart All of the pressure's gonna drive you crazy Cause you rise to the mad Too small, I got big dreams. You just starting, I'm way ahead at the end scenes. Started reading and dodging all of the quick schemes. Money like your Spotify, boy, I got 10 streams. And I'm still looking for more. My people, they got a sore. I'm putting that on the Lord. Ain't accepting, ignore. Just kicking down all the doors. Guarantee you, boy, if I ask for it, it's got to be real big. I got to make it just for my kids and for their kids. It's kids, that's wealth years and years. Promise my brother, soon as he out and finish this bid, we finna do it bigger than anybody ever did. The odds is real big. Job that's real big. Satan trying a little, my God is real big. Stayed up on the grind and the cars is real big. I got to do it big. The only way that I can live. 
And I promise I'm trying to Before you count me out, homie, let me remind you They was blocking the shine, now I think it's my time to Careful them dollar signs, like lights, they'll blind you Let me rewind to Back when I was broken, I couldn't acquire two cents And now I got two wrists They was sleeping on me, homie, must have got too big Call my phone, I'll be like, who this? Damn right, hell yeah, I'm brand new. Smell like can too. I'm fresh forever like can food. Try and tell me what I can't do. I wanna see the world, my vision on share mood. I mean, I got goals that's real big. Foes that's real big. Y'all offer too little, sorry, my soul is real big. Coming into the ring with blows that's real big. I gotta do it big, that's the only way I can live. I gotta do it big. I gotta do it big. I gotta do it big. Gotta do it big, that's the only way to live. I gotta do it big. I gotta do it big. I gotta do it big. Gotta do it big. That's the only way to live. Come on. Yeah. Come on.
There's been so much technical innovation in the tools we've turned over to the community. So I'm excited to join you to break down how developers around the world have been using Lens Studio to build really advanced and impactful AR experiences. Awesome, let's get started. I love to see examples where AR helps people learn something new. Harry Banda is a developer based in Zambia, and he built a puzzle game to introduce coding concept to teens and adults alike. Now you're talking my language. From a technical perspective, Harry used our scripting engine to write complex game logic, which powers the interactivity of the game's 10 levels. Right, and each of the levels builds on the previous lesson, moving from basic sequences to Boolean logic to more advanced loop commands. I also like the virtual UI that lets players input commands and run the program. This was created in Lens Studio using our UI framework. I hope this lens inspires a new generation of engineers. I hope the same too. While Harry's Lens was an educational game, we've got another playful experience that will get you moving. There have been great football lenses that use hand tracking or just the base interactions. But until recently, we had not seen a football lens that uses foot tracking technology to kick the ball. And beyond foot tracking, this lens also incorporates body tracking to wear your team's jersey and helmet, as well as physics to make the ball fly realistically between the goalposts. There's also fun gameplay elements like power-ups and moving goalposts, which required game engine design. This lens was built by Pradeepa Anandi, and I have to say, the kick is good. Next up, we're going from the football field to the weight room with a visual gym assistant. Beam AI built a lens that identifies gym equipment and recommends exercises to target specific areas of the body using equipment. This lens represents the power of augmented reality by providing information based on real-world objects around you. Exactly. Beam AI built their own ML classification model to detect equipment, including barbells, dumbbells, kettlebells, medicine balls, and an exercise mat. The custom models were built using Teachable Machine and TensorFlow Lite. And then the lens could recognize those pieces of gym gear to recommend a relevant exercise. They added 3D characters that demonstrate the selected exercise and compress them with our recently released Draco tools. It's awesome to hear that the team also thought about how our voice ML tools would let Snapchatters say what they wanted to work on in the gym, too. I'm really impressed with how this lens uses advanced AR capabilities to build a robust AR experience that will bring people back again and again and could work well on Snapchat or another mobile app today or optimize for hands-free experience on Spectacles. All right, one more lens to try on. The Beyond Studio team in Amsterdam built Hybrid Jacket, an immersive futuristic fashion try-on experience. They designed a series of three jackets inspired by reusable materials and recyclable plastics, each accompanied with a whole scene that truly fits the vibe of each garment. The jackets and roomscapes are not only visually stunning, but so technically advanced. The portal rooms required coding to display the room from the portal door without having anything behind the door. And Beyond Studio mastered the art of directing a user flow between the front and world-facing cameras. The feature of fashion has arrived. There's so much that's possible through Snap AR today. We know that these technically advanced, sophisticated lenses often require a whole team to bring them to life. We're working on a series of improvements to make it easier for multiple people to work together in Lens Studio as a team, such as refactoring our project structure to play nicely with version control. And over time, we'll bring you tools that let you customize your workflows so you can work faster together. That's awesome news. Sounds like your team has a big year ahead. Hey, if you're watching this video right now, it means you're at LensFest, and you know something that most of the world haven't quite yet figured out. And that is that augmented reality is gonna change every aspect of our lives. When we move from the QWERTY keyboard being the primary input to technology, to the camera, and overlaying information onto the world. My name's Yusuf Omar. I've been a journalist for about 11 years, covered war zones, used to work at CNN International. Today, I'm the co-founder of Scene. We have 10 shows and we use augmented reality to guide citizens through the storytelling process. And I think whether you are an investor, a lens creator, any kind of individual organization, understanding which company or platform is likely to be successful in this augmenting computer future is really important because you want to invest your time and your efforts behind that platform. And I think whichever platform is going to win 
is gonna need the Royal Flush. They're gonna need five cards. And I'm gonna share with you what I think those are. The first is they need an operating system built around the camera. That is the 10. And when I look at Snap, they have hundreds of millions of people who every day open into the camera. I've worked with newsrooms around the world and we've actually been able to use that camera to enable people to tell stories in the most incredible ways. I mean, a few years ago, we were working with rape survivors in India and we were able to use lenses to help hide their identities and empower them to still tell their stories. So I think as an operating system built around the camera, Snap own that card. They really are worlds ahead and that's why they have the 10. But of course, it's not just about an operating system, right? You also need great apps. And when you look at Lens Studio, it's like a Ferrari and most of us are driving it in first gear. You know, we haven't really unlocked the full potential, but it's an incredibly powerful tool. My team's been able to use it to create baby fairy. My wife is very pregnant, so we're able to track the progress of our firstborn soon to be, hopefully. Uh, we've been able to create environmental experiences here in Australia, where we have this koala bear named Albert who navigates you through uh, space and time. We've created spectacles experiences so Muslims can understand the Quran in English and obviously hear it in Arabic. Really, really interesting things. In South Africa, we worked on an experience where you can scan uh, colonial statues and they tell you about their racist past. So I think when you look at the Jack apps, SAP are so far ahead and mainly because they've got such an amazing community, you guys that are developing amazing products. But of course, you need a really good developer tool and Lens Studio is just amazing in that respect. I think the next important card is a queen. We all know that this future of augmented reality is not gonna be on a phone and that's a really good thing. Who wants to look at the world like this and this? This is so much friction with the internet. It's most likely gonna be wearables, right? We're gonna be rocking something and being able to see information overlaid onto the world. And who knows, maybe I'm reading my script right now using these. And I've been wearing cameras on my body for like 10 years now. Um, but since 2016, I've been wearing spectacles. And you know, they've come such a long way from one camera to being waterproof, to two cameras, to now having a full head-mounted display, right? A computer two centimeters away from my optical nerve, really putting the internet as close to my brain as possible and providing me with both creative experiences, like being chased by a zombie, but also like utility experiences. And I think in terms of like this combination of like really cool design, but also really like resilient, tough hardware, Snap have done some amazing work in that, in that hardware space. So that for me is the queen, but the king is the most important. Whichever company is going to get billions of people around the world to wear wearables, they're gonna to have to be so focused on privacy. For me, the king is privacy because you get such valuable data, right? And such meaningful and sensitive data when people are wearing computers and cameras on their faces. You really need to trust that that platform is gonna use your data in a sensitive way and, and really gonna protect your data. And Snap have built an ethos and principles around the protection of data and really looking after their community as their first priority from day one. And I fundamentally believe that when we move into this wearable space, with trust being such an important card, Snap are really worlds ahead in terms of building trust. And trust doesn't come overnight, right? It's like a relationship. It takes years and years to build. The final card, the ace, is education. When the internet came out, people didn't really know why they'd need it. When mobile phones came out, people didn't really know why they'd need that. And as augmented reality starts the mainstream, and we expect by 2025, 75% of the world's population are gonna use it on a regular basis, people don't really understand what they're gonna do with the camera. That education is gonna come from partners. It's gonna come from this community who are at scale gonna be showing people the incredible experiences that they can have that really create meaningful and positive changes in their lives. But education is such an important card. And when I look at that full uh, Royal Flush, right from the operating system to the apps, to the hardware, um, right through to trust and of course education, I think Snap hold all those cards. And that's why I'm betting the farm on the platform. Especially as a small business, I don't have the flexibility or resources to be trying to do augmented reality on tons and tons of different platforms and trying to do it well. I've got to 
really look at the landscape and, and take a bet on who I think is going to win. And I think Snap's going to win. I'm really excited about everything this community is doing. I love the way that we all share so much and help each other out. And I think, you know, in the same way that there were billion dollar businesses built in Web2 around ride sharing and booking hotels, there are going to be massive organizations that are going to be built on this augmented computing future. And they're going to come out of this community. Take care. Enjoy LensFest. Thanks so much. We're excited to be here to celebrate you, the global AR creator and developer community. Excited to be here with you, not only for the fifth annual LensFest, but also the five-year anniversary of Lens Studio. Working with custom landmarkers is a different experience than working on any other type of AR effect in Lens Studio because in the end we're also telling a little bit of a story um, when the user is inside of the lens. I've always imagined putting virtual elements on landmarkers around me. From scanning the landmarker into calling it in Lens Studio, I'm putting my elements upon it. I would scan the object I want to scan. So in this case, I chose the middle Memphis M as my scanner on the large Memphis sign, and I would plan out or create experience around that mesh. Lens Studio was one of the main tools we make in this lens. It helped to combine all the pieces, adjust it, and brought it into AR. We're now uh, able to scan using the uh, LiDAR device, which is something that previously was only available for high-end productions. Lens Studio is a powerful tool full of powerful features. I can't imagine that I can make this lens without Lens Studio. Well, this was my first time working with custom landmarks. Seeing your city grow up and since you were a child, seeing all of these buildings, it was incredible. I love working with custom landmarkers. It is so exciting to see AR integrated into world-renowned landmarks and buildings and sites. The custom landmarker template makes it so easy to integrate AR itself and allows you really to focus on the creative. Lens Studio was perfect for this lens because it allowed me to easily set up the effect and I didn't have to go through hurdles or do a backflip just to make a change. I'm really happy with how the, how the effect turned out and I owe it to Lens Studio.
Hi, my name is Dan Oser, and I'm a part of the SNAP AR Partnerships team. My team's goal at SNAP is to help foster and establish meaningful relationships with innovative AR developers to help bring their vision for the future of AR to life. And one part of that is in partnership with industry-leading brands like Live Nation, HBO Max, and Disney. We are proud to have such a diverse global network of creators, developers, teams, and agencies with unique talents and skill sets, like many of you watching, all within our community. This is why we feel grateful to be able to connect with many of you with brands who need your AR expertise to play a critical role in making their vision become a reality through the power of AR. In this session, you'll hear from two Snap AR creators, Chris and Andre, who are both experts in collaborating with brands, artists, and companies on AR experiences. We're also joined by Angelique, one of the brand leaders currently working on an AR strategy for her business. In our conversation, we'll get to the heart of what makes a successful long-term relationship between AR developer and their clients, and what both sides look for throughout the partnership. All right, let's, let's start with introductions. Chris, can you kick us off? Yeah, I'm Chris Lee, one of the co-founders of Artifact and Creative Director, now Senior Director of Design at Nike. Amazing, Angelique? Yeah, hi, I'm Angelique Vendette. I am the Global Head of Marketing for Allo Yoga. Amazing. And Andre. I'm Andre Elijah. I'm an immersive director and founder of Andre Elijah Immersive. All right, Andre, so can you share your background and journey into AR? Yeah, so initially I was a virtual reality dev and uh, had a project with a couple of the original OLCs from uh, working with Snap. And uh, every week we would have our meeting about the project and we'd just devolve into AR and what the latest is with Snap. And eventually they said, you know, do you want an intro? And do you want to go on this journey with us? So that was two years ago with the, and they got me into the uh, Snap AR residency and then learned everything about Lem Studio. And, uh, you know, two years on, I've been working with brands nonstop in the Snap ecosystem. Amazing, amazing. Thanks for joining us. Anjali, could you share how you first realized that there was an opportunity for AR to make an impact on your business? Yeah, absolutely. We have always really been interested in how you know, AR can help augment the physical world and have always been interested in things like digital fashion. And so diving in for Aloe, it felt just natural to be able to show our consumers both the IRL version of the clothing, but then a URL version that felt just as realistic. Yeah, amazing. It's great to hear your light bulb moment when you realize AR's value for Allo. Yeah. Um, now, most likely as the CMO, you don't have a ton of time to dive in and really understand the ins and outs of Lens Studio and develop your own AR experience. So I'm wondering how you went about finding and searching for a partner who could help you bring the value of AR you saw to life. Could you tell us a little bit about how you started evaluating AR experts and some of the criteria that you had for Allo? Yeah, for us, you know, finding an AR partner was quite easy in the sense that we wanted to find the very best. Knowing that Snap AR is the best technology out there, wanted to find a technology that would help amplify the clothing and help show the clothing in a realistic manner. So if you are trying it on, you know, um, whether it's with a lens or in real life, there wouldn't be too much of a difference. And that's where we found the value and that's how we found the partnership. Amazing, yeah. And conversely, Andre and Chris, you both have years experience working with as experts and helping artists and companies bring their ideas to life with AR. But before we dive into your recent work, I'd love to learn a little bit about how you both started or how did you find your first partners who were willing to collaborate on virtual experiences with you? And Chris, let's, let's start with you. I was always a 3D artist ever since I was a kid. My first introduction to 3D was in 1997. From there, I knew I wanted to be an artist. So I went into the music industry designing for a lot of rappers. I worked with The Game, Nas, Anderson Pock, eventually Janae Aiko. Like I, I designed all of Janae Aiko's album covers. So I did my thing in the music industry for a while, designing and directing music videos. And then uh, I got bored of music videos. I wanted to eventually do something where I started to have ownership in my stuff. So I went into filmmaking, did a couple movies. I did uh, two movies with Danny Trejo, one called Zombie Hunter that was on uh, Netflix back in like 2013. Did all my own VFX. So I kept my film super cheap. I knew how to stretch a dollar. Then from film, got bored of it, went into the game design sector, designing skins 
for a game called Counter Strike Global Offensive, Dota 2, and eventually Rainbow Six Siege. But I was designing the skins through the Steam Workshop, which was like the light bulb moment because Valve basically gave artists royalties. And I thought this was like the coolest thing ever. Like artists should have ownership in the work they create. So from there, I bumped into my co-founder Benoit, who at the time was at Fnatic, which is like an esports team. He was like the brand manager. We did some collabs, and then he introduced me to Zaptio, which he was the other co-founder who could make the sneakers into reality, and the rest was history. And so you three came from different backgrounds yeah, and yeah. really formed similar yeah. but different. Amazing, amazing. And, and Andre, let's let's turn to you. Yeah, I mean, just as an aside, I was actually a part of the Danny Trejo fan club in high school. Oh, wow. So every week on Wednesdays, we would watch a different Danny Trejo film. Uh, so yeah, I lit up when you just said that. But for me, I mean, I've kind of been a creative my entire life. Started off as a kid, uh, you know, as a musician and then child actor and then eventually moved behind the camera, worked in the film industry for a while. And eventually, you know, that was all well and good. I just really enjoyed video games. and realized one day, hey, it's actually someone's job to make them. So I learned the tools and, you know, kind of figured that out on YouTube and was self-taught. And one thing led to another. I was going from, you know, game engine to game engine. And then virtual reality happened with the original Oculus Kickstarter. And then, you know, I saw the HoloLens for the first time and I was like, wow, that's a really cool device. And eventually it turned into, wait, there, you know, you could get this bulky device that's really expensive and exclusive, or you can do AR on a phone and reach, you know, millions and then ultimately hundreds of millions of people. So I think that was kind of when I started realizing the scale and that it's real, it's not a faraway thing, like half these devices, it's here now yep. and people are engaging with it. I think that was kind of my moment. I'm like, okay, I'm all in now. Jumped in. Yeah, and so, you know, the last couple of years has been great. Doing different branded projects, working with AT&T, DirecTV, Uber, the NFL, and then now, most recently, Allo. You know, it's just been fun reaching people where they are. Amazing, those early days are so formative and that, that's super inspiring. And I'd love to hear some of the AR experience you've worked on with clients since the early days. What, what does that look like? And how did, how did those early days really form how you work with people today? So maybe, uh, could you describe maybe one or two projects that you're most proud of and some highlights about the, the work that you um, did with clients or partners together? And Andre, back to you. Yeah, I mean, we did a project last year in collaboration with Current Studios for the DirecTV Serena Williams campaign. That was all over TV in the U.S. And uh, so the robots that were attacking her in that mall, uh, we basically built a game around them where they attack you on your phone and you have to bounce the balls that they're shooting back at them at different targets. And it was like almost like a wave shooter where they appeared all around you. So that was really fun. And, you know, coming from Canada, you know, we don't have direct TV up there. <laughs> so true. coming down to the States and seeing, you know, oh my God, here's this ad campaign. And then here's the game that we built that went alongside it was really cool. And then, you know, most recently in New York Fashion Week, you know, did a bunch of stuff there. Yeah. You were involved in Amazing. all the projects with me, capping that off with the Allo activation, which was the digital mirror. And then even bringing Allo to Snap in the first place was awesome. Serena is ahead of the game. She's actually a Clone X holder as well. Oh, is she? Clone X holder. I love that. Yeah, she's awesome. That's yeah, cool that you got to awesome. do something with her. Yeah, it was fun. The, the Olo Collection, the New York Fashion Week experience yeah. was amazing. It was so much fun. Um, and Angelique, as a key stakeholder in that project, yeah. can you share your motivation to work with Andre and what some of your goals for the activation were? Yeah, absolutely. So we're the official wellness partner of New York Fashion Week. This year, knowing that we were launching a luxury collection for the first time, we also wanted to show. So we had our first presentation at New York Fashion Week this round. And in addition to showing on models, we also had more so of an immersive experience. Because it is the luxury line, we wanted to differentiate itself. Not only is the luxury, you know, premium and feel IRL, but then we also wanted to have a premium URL experience with that too. And so that's what led me to Andre in this experience here. So in addition to seeing the clothing in real life on models, you were able to also try it on in the AR mirror that we partnered with Snap on and that Andre helped us design. So effectively you were seeing it on model, but then you were also able to stand in front of the mirror and although the collection hadn't launched, you were able to try pieces on, you know, figure out your favorite piece of that collection so that then it would incite interest and intent, not only for purchase, but for sharing out much more of the Aspen collection. 
Yeah. yeah, it was an amazing experience, and the whole the whole activation in New York Fashion Week was incredible. So, Angelique and Andre, I'd love to dive into what it was like to work together throughout the development of that experience. So, Andre, could you tell us a bit about your approach in working with brands like Ala? Yeah, I mean, mostly saying, please trust me. <laughs> <laughs> I know what I'm doing here. No, I mean, it starts with a big idea, right? And like identifying what the opportunity is. And so in this case, it was, I don't think there's a bigger stage than New York Fashion Week, really. Yeah. Ultimately, we knew we had to come correct. And, you know, with launching this collection, it was, okay, let's show off the best pieces and show them off in the best way. And, you know, initially we started with a larger list of items that we wanted to show off. And then, you know, it was kind of, let's play around with it a little bit, see what works with the tech. And ultimately where we landed, you know, looked really good and it was a draw, right? When people would walk in, they'd see the AR mirror and like just run to it. And I think, uh, you know, seeing that come to life was really cool. And in terms of just working together, you know, we did our thing with the check-ins and, yeah. you know, it's like, hey, this is working, this isn't, let's talk about it. But, you know, we got there. It was yeah. pretty smooth, was, all things considered. Yeah, amazing partnership. Andre and I are friends. We're both Canadian, so <laughs> there's history there. It's not our first time collaborating. Yeah. The trust was there too. But when you walk into an immersive experience, yes, you're seeing these models. Yes, you're at New York Fashion Week. Yes, you're immersed in kind of the aloe wellness ecosystem, which had intuitive reading and massages and um, sound baths, but then also having the AR mirror, you know, just complemented the entire luxury collection. So it was wonderful to collaborate together and bring this to life. And you know, what we're not sharing here is that we brought it to life in under than three weeks, right? Yeah. So it was a quick um, turnaround. Yeah, quick turnaround, but again, really amplified what we were doing and would not have shown at New York Fashion Week without it. Yeah, it was amazing. Andre, you nailed it. It was awesome. It was a team effort. Yeah, you <laughs> nailed it too. <laughs> Thanks. Angelique, so was there a time where, uh, during this process, where you had to evolve your vision? Can you, can you share a little bit about how Andre helped you uh, work through the concept and, and work with Andre on that concept? Yeah, absolutely. Like any big project, there are some unforeseen pieces. And so we did have to evolve our vision. I would be lying if I would say that all major campaigns are not you know, tweaking or making adjustments as, as you set forth to launch. And so in this particular case, when we were setting up at New York Fashion Week a few days before the presentation, we came to a place where we were able to see the collection in AR and ultimately decided to cut down on the number of items that would be shown for New York Fashion Week, that the visitor to our space, editor, the model, whatever, they would be able to try on very distinct key pieces that we thought would be the most fun. So these look like puffer jackets, puffer skirts, things that had a bit more dimension and movement as part of the collection because it's the Aspen collection. It's inspired by après ski, by, by snow, by, by Aspen itself. Right. And imagine there are items like earmuffs or like sweaters that would not have the same effect. So being able to cut down and trim down on what we ended up presenting, I think was the right decision because ultimately, you know, as Andre said earlier, there was a lineup of folks. They would come in, see the models, see the collection, get in line right away for AR Mirror to try it on and yeah. then come into the rest of the wellness offering. And that was really special to see. So ultimately the right decision to cut down on the number of SKUs <laughs> <laughs> that we presented. And yeah, really happy with that decision. People were so excited about it. It's great to hear that you were able to both to work together and really make that this whole experience impactful. So it was really amazing. So one final question before I put Chris back on the hot seat. I know that this is just the beginning for AR at Allo. Yeah. How do you see this technology evolving your business in the future? And what are some other great AR experiences we can expect from this collaboration? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, there's one piece that we didn't mention from this collaboration is that Yes, you were able to try on via the AR mirror in person at New York Fashion Week, but we also had a lens. And so people across the world at the same time were able to try on the Aspen collection for the first time before it launched. We actually launched the collection just a few days ago on October 19th. And so between September 10th and October 19th, the only ones who were able to try it across the world were folks in their home yeah. holding the phone yeah. via AR. And that's really cool. So that was amazing. And then when we think of going forward, you know, you could expect things like larger collections that are launched, you know, fully in digital fashion realms where you can try on a full collection. You can perhaps co-create 
as part of a collection. So things like that, I think AR will continue to amplify that. And then heading into the future even more so, you know, when we think of our app, like Allo Moves, being able to engage in yoga and meditation with an augmented reality. I think that's really exciting for the future as well. Yeah, that's incredibly exciting. So thanks for sharing about the New York Fashion Week experience and congrats on the launch for the Aspen Collection. Thank you. All right, Chris, back over to you. So as you mentioned, Artifact has worked with clients such as Mirakami, uh, and I think you mentioned Jeff Staple as well. Uh, I'd love to hear some of your best practices when it comes to working with external partners and maybe how your team supports different various stages throughout the project. Again, do your research on the collaborator you're working with to make the collaboration effortless and comfortable. After doing the research, you're able to you know, explain to them how this whole process works because we'd like to involve them heavily. For example, Takashi Murakami, great guy to work with. He's done his traditional thing, painter, even sculptor. Uh, but to introduce him to AR, it was very exciting. Uh, he's seen AR before and has done some stuff in it. But the level we wanted to take it, we, you know, we, 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 we made sure he was involved from ground zero. The experience we did with the Gagosian Gallery was awesome. Yeah, we did this whole thing where if you walked into the gallery, we had the snap codes embedded on the walls. There's like several floors of the gallery. One of them, you scanned it, you pointed it around, the whole ceiling would open up and you had a giant clone next to Kashi Murakami overlooking the crowd as they're looking at all his pieces. And then you had, we used the physics system. So we had this product called the Clonex Vial. So it's actually the NFT that you use to unveil your Clonex PFP. They were falling from this cool cosmic galactic sky. It was really cool. And then we also had uh, an experience at every single one of the Clonex avatar paintings where if you scanned it, uh, the eyes did the old school haunted house thing where the eyes kind of look at your camera wherever you moved. I mean, even he had his own personal exhibit yeah. on the other floor where he did these really cool like porcelain fish paintings. And you went in there and you basically would see hologram fish, like the whole room filled up with water and the hologram fish would just swim around this really cool open space. But yeah, practices, this goes more toward with our 3D team uh, is all about optimization. A lot of us came from the gaming space. So optimizing 3D assets, like with polygon count, UV texture practices, like UV spacing to make sure that we can keep the file size much smaller so we can incorporate a lot more into one filter. Um, I feel like it's a key component in making really, really dope looking filters. Thanks yep. for sharing those. Yep. And uh, earlier this year, I know you landed perhaps your biggest client project yet, which is an acquisition of Artifact. Uh, by Nike, so huge congrats on that. That's amazing. Um, when, when did you first care? Can you talk a little bit about when you first started working with Nike? Yeah, we got acquired in December. It was amazing, an amazing journey. Crazy experience for all of us. After getting acquired, we were like, what's the coolest thing we could do? One is to reward our Clonex holders with a dope box called the Monolith. It was a mystery box. And if you held onto the box, they unveiled these really cool sneakers I designed. It was our collaboration with Nike called the Dunk Genesis that allowed you to stick in a skin vial. And again, this is coming from our background with gaming. We always knew the future would be skins, kids collecting skins like Fortnite skins. So these collectible vials, you have a base dunk, you stuck the vial in and it changed your sneaker into one of the eight DNAs, so like demon, angel, angel, <laughs> reptile, uh, Murakami DNA. And then these shoes could be evolved as well. Yeah, we we hinted time. at that over time, they can evolve. So everything we put the gamer first, we put internet culture first, and then we tie it to physical. But that project we're very proud of with Nike. And then from there, Absolutely. we eventually went into more uh, SKUs. We have a lot of Air Forces. So pre acquisition, we collaborated, and this goes back to what I was saying earlier, where I believe artists should always own a percentage of what they do. It's the creator economy. I myself as a creative, I felt like we got used or were hired guns, right? Oh, he's just a designer. Let's hire him, get him to do this work, move on, yeah. right? I was like, no, man, artists should have some sort of residual. Um, I feel like that's the way of the future. So the 18 artists we picked and we brought in a secret collaborator paris hilton 
who came in and started promoting all these unknown new artists that eventually all from this this collab they all have their own careers now uh, some of them are like when we collaborated with them they were like 16 years old 15 years old there's an artist named Swist, Jaden, super dope talented kid we split 50 50 revenue with them they all made pretty good money from this collab and then after the acquisition because we told everybody if you bought the space trip collectible you can forge them for sneakers so we didn't hesitate we said hey nike let's give these guys air force ones so we did the air force one artifact collab where inside was our artifact logo which is called the blade and the other side is the nike swoosh uh, we got the artist to reskin the sneakers so these are brand new artists that all got their own nike colorway which is like the that's so the cool. grail in sneaker culture like everybody wishes they can get a nike silhouette or a colorway but these are new artists that all got it paris hilton even got her own and it was really cool that really broke the boundaries i feel like in the industry and then another thing too which i feel like not a lot of people are talking about but it's it's very groundbreaking and historic but clonex we worked with nike to figure out how to do 100 percent rights to the community which is almost like Disney saying, here's a Mickey Mouse, go make money with it. Right. That's what yeah. we did at Nike. So now every Clonex holder who owns a PFP can go out, make any brand they want. Again, because we believe in the creator community, go do whatever you want with the character, it's yours. And so that's one of the last things we did that we're very, very proud of um, working with Nike. Uh, and you mentioned that to me before, it was like this, this really gave artists and creatives a platform or designers yes, yes. a platform and a voice, right? That's amazing. So, and Chris, how, how has your working relationship evolved with Nike now that you're embedded with the team, now that you're there? How has that relationship evolved? It's really cool because like we're learning from them and they're learning from us. We're on the right mission. They know, we know that the whole industry is going to eventually go into Web3. Um, that's the way of the future. So it's gotten a lot closer. At first, it was hard to navigate. We're not used to that corporate culture but we navigated through it met a lot of cool people teams were amazing to work with and they are very innovative that's why we felt like it was a great fit because they you know these are the same guys that make the back to the future sneakers like this is crazy it's like tinker hatfield they're just as innovative as we are it's, it's a mutual respect they kill it with sport and creating figuring out cool movement for the athlete with sneakers new technologies they've been into web3 for a while what's a funny funny story was we did two funding rounds the first round was in so we created the company of the, the inception of art the idea late 2018 so my two co-founders uh benoit and zaptio were like okay let's go raise let's do this raising thing no one believed in us except for two dcs galaxy digital and gfr fund this really boutique japanese fund out of silicon valley and they had no idea what we were doing. They just took the bet, right? They're like, what is this whole digital sneaker thing? The only thing we can compare it to is skins. Like Fortnite, yeah, do, do kids collect skins, a new generation collect skins, yeah? Like that's a big business. And sneakers, same thing, sneaker collectors, like they, they buy and trade sneakers. It only made sense. It was inevitable that the, that the two cultures kind of fused together. Then we closed funding in 2019. A few years later, we decided to go to Japan to celebrate and, you know, get inspiration because we're all anime fans. To go there, look at the architecture of Tokyo, meet some studios and see if we can, you know, potentially get some collaborations. Right when we landed, our phones blew up. Uh, you know, there was an article that came out stating that these patents got leaked by Nike and it was the Crypto Kicks patent. We were in shock because when we look at the patents, this is almost exactly what we were planning on doing. Right. Like, the digital virtual collectible sneakers. We were stressed on, okay, do we take this company in a new direction? What do we do? So we went back to the hotel to brainstorm. We decided, you know what, let's just continue what we're doing. Then fast forward, after the Nike acquisition, we released the Nike Artifact Collab Dunk Genesis, which was the shoe based off of that patent. So the patent got handed to us. Amazing. And we executed it. Yep. That sounds awesome. My last questions for the group are a bit more forward looking, more futuristic. Angelique, is there a future you see where AR ties the physical to the digital? And what role do you see AR playing in the way that maybe all of customers will interact with the brand and interact with your business in the future? Yeah, I mean, tying in the physical with the virtual, I think is always the goal of augmented reality. You're not trying to 
disrupt or change what we're experiencing in the physical, but you're trying to augment it. I think there's a plethora of examples in which that could take shape. Right now in, for example, the Allo Sanctuary metaverse that we have, we have about 56 million people wow. doing yoga and meditation with us on a regular basis. And being able to be submerged into this world where they're tuning in by tuning out, focusing on their mental health, focusing on their daily affirmations is just really special. And so without that augmented reality, that might not be a possibility for some to tune into themselves by tuning out of the real world. So do see that it can amplify certain scenarios. And then on the flip side, there's other use cases like try on, right? Especially when you think of fashion, when you think of examples that you were you know, sharing earlier, being able to try before you buy. In addition to that, navigate your world, but then if you want to be at a runway show, but you can't because you're sitting in Paris and the show is in New York, for example, right. you're able to be submerged and be in a space and be able to live it in real time. So those are all things that I think are exciting that tie back to having a physical and then digital representation. Can I add something? Think about how much of the world buys collectible items just to store and resell. That will go away, that will just, not go away, but transferred into the metaverse. And this is why I believe in Web3, augmented reality, and you know, the metaverse. I feel like it's gonna help rebuild the planet. So in your mind, there's an environmental aspect yes, to it as well? Yes, it's a huge, huge aspect of it. Sustainability is the future, yeah. It also helps to democratize, right? Yes. And yes, so yes. collections that are not accessible to all, for yeah. example, like right now we have 60 million pieces of digital fashion being worn on avatars. Right. And that's incredible because it might not be accessible to everyone. I'm not only speaking about Allo, this was Allo specific, but certain collections that you might not reach or you may not be able to purchase. It just helps on a sustainability standpoint through and through for the planet, but then for humankind and, and just the way that we treat each other and our world. Such yeah. a great point. Yeah. That's why we had like the $1 Jeff Staple bird. It was right. literally a yeah. dollar. And then in our new Remova collab, we have, if you can't afford one of our price points, we have a robot, like a collectible robot for a hundred bucks that you can collect. Um, but yeah, it's... If you can get the mint. <laughs> yeah, yeah, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Bringing us home, Andre, as an AR expert, how do you see this future? And how are you planning to help your partners realize this future? Someone who's been in this space for so long and helping them bring uh, that vision to life. Yeah, I mean, I think looking forward, AR basically democratizes information and understanding about the world around you, right? You know, some of the most fun lenses are literally you point your phone at a bird, yeah. right? And all of a sudden you can learn about it, you know, the bird calls and everything else. And I think, you know, having contextually aware information yeah. that, you know, is either in your pocket on your phone or you point the camera at something or soon with spectacles, yeah. you know, that's going to unlock a lot of learning for people. And being able to, you know, have a conversation and hold someone's gaze without having to look at the watch or the phone or yeah. the, everything around you, I think, will be really important in kind of reestablishing those connections between people. So with that in mind, you know, how do you work with a brand with those guidelines and like, okay, let's not get the phone and the screens up in front of people, but let's that. connect them. I think that'll be the future in the next you know, few years. It's not only information at your fingertips, but it's also maintaining connection with yeah. the people and the environment around you, right? Yeah, that I love integration. that. Seamless integration mm -hmm. of both. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. That's amazing. Well, it's been a pleasure hanging out with all of you. Thank you for taking the time. It was a lot of fun. So, thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks for having Appreciate us. Appreciate it. Edward Allen Vogue, Editor-in-Chief, British Vogue, and European Editorial Director, Vogue. Welcome to Vogue and Snapchat Redefining the Body Exhibition. I wanted to collaborate with Snapchat because they really are leading the field in augmented reality. As part of the curation process, I've invited each brand to bring their usual universe to life by presenting iconic fashion looks inside an exclusively designed exhibition space. So redefining the body is really about 
embracing people of all races, all sizes, all age, all socioeconomic background. But when you have your phone and you can direct it to an outfit and see yourself reflected in that and be able to be whoever I want to be and you can see yourself. And I always say, if you can see it, you can be it. To a lot of people, that's nothing, but it's really powerful. This exhibition is at the crossroads of fashion and technology. It's showing you what's possible. To me, it's what fashion represents today, inclusivity. And I feel like Snapchat's technology is really the way forward.
hope on this pointless. Waiting in fame while successfully hoping. I could be seriously kidding, but you must be joking. All clear. When reached, that transforms to here. Time is an illusion that we always premiere with New Year. And the glass is never half empty when you appreciate the atmosphere. This didn't make sense to the senseless. Unintended confusion intended. The mark varied. As a regular scuba diver, I spend a lot of time thinking about the ocean and how we don't know that much about it. We don't really understand it that well. And I did meet some scientists who were working on studying the ecosystem around Cocos Island and the surrounding area. And when I told them about this project that I was working on and how I was looking at the topography of Cocos Island, they were very excited because they could get a lot of high resolution data in a 3D model that would make it easier for other people to come in and understand the topography and you know, generally what's difficult to understand intuitively on a computer screen. I'm interested in the transition between AR as a shiny fun toy to a useful tool. So this sort of unlocked my interest as something that I wanted to get involved with. My name is Arthur Bouffard and I'm an AR developer. Initially, I got into AR development because I started a thesis project on mixed reality, got access to a pretty high-end headset, and then just started making AR experiences with uh, Lens Studio. Surf AR, the lens that I built, is actually a lens that teaches anyone how to surf and also teaches intermediate surfers how to improve their moves. What motivated me to build this lens was that I've always really been into surfing. It's been something that started when I was 11 years old and I always found that the barrier to entry for learning how to surf is really high and I figured augmented reality could be a good solution here to bring more people to learn how to surf. Initially, the problem I tried to solve with this lens was getting more people to understand how surfing works. A lot of the times, some of my friends have asked me, how do I get started? Where do I look? And it's either online resources like video tutorials, or you need to actually go and take surf lessons. And there is no middle ground between both of those. And that's why I decided to build this lens. So the experience I wanted to create here with this lens was not only a, an experience that pushes people to learn something new, but also to kind of help intermediate users to improve their skills. That was kind of the whole idea behind this, is not necessarily for it to be like a very intense physical lens, but more kind of a learning experience that would enable you to improve your fitness. The way that this lens was initially developed is that I wanted to create an immersion since the start of the experience where the user can see themselves. And for that, I'm actually using full body tracking for basically detecting where a person's feet are, where his arms are, and what kind of movements are happening throughout the experience. 
I did collaborate with someone from the Snap Lens Network, and that is with uh, Max Van Leeuwen. Shout out to Max. <laughs> We didn't collaborate directly, but I used a resource that he taught me at Go Spooky, which was the mesh copying effect that is seen at the end of the lens. I actually also used one of his water shaders that he created for another project to make the ground seem like the ocean. The main thing I learned when making this lens was that it was actually possible for me to convert one of my biggest passions into an augmented reality experience. Initially, I didn't think this would really be possible, but I discovered that turning this passion into like a learning experience for other people was really awesome. And another thing that I did learn was on the technical side of things, where I kind of got to understand how to copy a person's uh, body mesh and then convert it into a 3D model that you can view from uh, any angle. I think in general, AR can have a huge impact on the fitness industry. With different features such as full body tracking, it's really simple to get uh, different movements and kind of help people understand if they're doing a movement correctly. So that could be with lifting weights or you know practicing a golf swing. Uh, you need to really get your movements precise, and I think AR could really help with that. And in later times when there's AR wearables, hopefully. Uh, that could also add a lot of value because you would be able to visualize different workouts or different routes that you would potentially not be able to identify before. My favorite part of being in the Snap Lens Network community is definitely the people that I've kind of met along the way. A lot of them have taught me things I know today and it's just everyone's usually very friendly and welcoming. It allowed me to meet a lot more people that I would have never met before. What excites me the most is the possibility that adolescents, children, or even adults who haven't heard about voices like theirs finally get to experience it through augmented reality. Augmented reality is the technology that we use uh, to transform your immediate surrounding. If communications, films, or books are a way to tell stories, augmented reality is a new way to live within those stories. So Pride Augmented, a celebration of queer art, is an AR experience in partnership with VO Curations. VO Curations is an art organization dedicated to support emerging and underrepresented artists through studios, exhibitions, and residencies. The mission behind VO Curations is to support emerging artists in the first years of their career following art school and to provide them with the tools to navigate the art industry, which is quite hostile. They have created the exhibition made of six artists that are a part of the community. It will take place on Soho's iconic Old Compton Street, where Snap users will have the opportunity to discover artworks ranging from painting, photography, digital art and collage work from six emerging queer artists and some of the most exciting talents um, of our generation. I always say that my work is for black trans people of the future. With the work that is going to be part of the project, I'm thinking less about like a message as opposed to like communicating a series of like sensations and emotions. You know, augmented reality has the scope of a sort of amplifying a message. You can make it bigger, you can make it more dramatic. And I think it will also attract us a different group of people that would be more inspired to look at art through a new lens. Pride is just about being your authentic selves. And these voices, historically, are the ones that created the movement that led me to have the rights that I have today.
been using the friend finder to find Jada because she literally always goes off missing. There are sets and artists that he wants to go see while at the same time we're at a different one with a different artist. So what's nice is we can use the friend finder to locate him and know where he's at. Oh, I've been using the air compass to find like food and water. It's so cool because if you're really thirsty, you need water, you just pull it on up, it'll say go this way, and then boom, you got some water. So the way I have been using the AR compass is to make sure I find my way to all the stage sets so we see the artists we want to see. I need to make sure I cross every single artist off on my list, so that has come in handy so much. It made everything so much easier. You could actually open it up and see the set times on different days, so I think that's pretty cool. Hi, I'm Elena Nizhnik, and I'm AR Training Manager here at Snap. LensCloud powers a new generation of augmented reality experiences that are more dynamic, useful, and interactive than ever before. LensCloud features expand what developers can build in AR, leveling up lenses to be more impressive experiences. Let's talk through these features. With multi-user services, developers can build and create AR content for unique shared experiences with updates to connected lenses, which allow you to pass and store data between devices running the same lens, and introduction of new high-level multi-user APIs, LensCloud makes it easier than ever to build collaborative experiences. Location-based AR builds on Snap's landmarkers and enables developers to expand their experiences by creating their own location-based content via custom location AR and city-scale AR. Storage services allows developers to expand how much content is available to their users. With persistent cloud storage, developers can now create experiences that save a user's preferences, progress, and more across multiple sessions. And with remote assets, we've extended file size restrictions by allowing developers to store up to 25 megabyte of content in the cloud and remotely fetch and load assets at runtime. Alongside nonprofit organization marked by COVID and developer KR Graphics, Snapchat partnered to create a lens that uses AR to enable communities to memorialize and celebrate loved ones lost to COVID-19. By creating a lens that allows family members to submit pictures and stories, we were able to support marked by COVID's vision in creating an accessible and unifying visual moment that captures memories from the communities most affected by COVID-19. I'll hand it over to Jonathan to give you an inside look at how the team utilized custom location AR to anchor the lens to the memorial site and the remote assets feature to power the experience, making it possible for so many people to remember their loved ones. Thanks, Elena. I'm Jonathan Solichin, an AR engineering manager here at Snap. Let's walk through how the Mark by COVID AR experience is able to host over 400 memorials in a single lens. For this Lens Studio project, the Lens Cloud Remote Assets features allows us to store content in the cloud and remotely fetch and load assets into the lens, and load assets into the experience once users interact with the lens. In addition, this lens uses custom landmarker to allow us to put the memorial in a specific location in the world for users to find. In the Resources panel, we can see these remote resources, which are downloaded once the users interact with the lens. Before remote assets, we were only able to add 100 pictures and we nearly reached the total lens size limit. Here, you can see we're able to host hundreds of images in this lens using remote assets. While our total lens size is more than eight megabytes, we deliver less than eight megabytes when the user first downloads the lens, and the rest is downloaded from the remote assets. 
This allows us to submit the lens without any size limit errors. Let's try adding our own image to the cloud and this lens. We'll drag our images to the Lens Studio Resources panel from our computer so we can add it to our lens. Next, we'll select the Remote Assets button in the Resources panel. Here, I'm able to manage all my remote assets. You can see that when I select my Teams organization, I can easily view all the assets we've uploaded to the cloud for this lens. Next, we'll select the Upload Asset button and choose the image we brought in earlier. Make sure it's added to the correct organization so your collaborators can see what you've uploaded later. Nice! The image has been uploaded with the information about it, including the file size, type, and where it's used. You can see this remote asset has automatically been added to our resources panel. Let's see this image now. We can grab a helper tool from the asset library to do so. Add the preview remote asset feature. Then follow the instruction and drag the assets to the object panel. We'll select the object that says Edit, click the Reference Asset field, and add the image we just added to the remote asset. In the Scene panel, we can now move our preview as we would with any object. Let's take a look at what this preview does and how it actually displays the remote assets. Double-click the Preview Remote Asset script in the Resource panel to open in the script editor. You can see at the top, we added an input for the remote assets. And at the very bottom, you can see that we called download asset on that input, which is the key function that loads our asset. Keep in mind that to make your lens efficient, you should only do this when you need to show the image, since this is the magic of remote assets. You can progressively download more content rather than downloading it all at once. This function then enables you to define two paths. In one, we get the asset, and the other if we don't get the asset. This is important, since we want to make our lenses work on every device even if the internet is slow or a device has limited memory or capacity. When we successfully download the asset, we want to use the remote asset. In this case, apply the texture onto an image. But if an issue happens, for example, the user's internet cuts out, your lens will still work. After all, the Snapchatter's experience is the most important thing. Since this is a preview, we just report the issue to the developer, but you should make a nice fallback for your lens. Use the preview feature to see if your assets work the way you want it to. The preview feature can adapt to any type of asset, whether a video or image or other files, and will display for you the same way it will appear for the Snapchatter. Pro tip, you can use this line to copy and paste in your own script. These types of assets can be uploaded to the remote asset storage directly. Texture, render mesh, audio track, object prefab, and script assets. Take a look at the remote asset documentation for additional details. So in this case, since we're trying to download images, we can see the remote asset is an asset texture and apply it to a material. In this case, it adds the texture to a mesh. Now that we know the image works, we can add this image to our lens. Let's delete this preview since we no longer need it. Let's take a look at the objects panel where we can see the object that controls our lens. We can add the image in our inspector panel by clicking Add Value. Remember that here, we're only adding the reference to our remote assets. Again, be sure to only download the actual assets when needed. Efficient lenses are engaged with more on Snapchat. This is a great benefit of the remote asset feature. You don't have to download everything all at once. That way, your lens can open super fast and you can download only what the user experiences. Now in this lens, the image is also attached to information about the person. Since the text data is small, we can just store that in the lens. What's great about remote assets is that it's very flexible. It's a pointer to our asset, so we can use it in any way we want, such as connecting it to data within the lens. In this case, we'll right-click the database and in the Resources panel, double-click to edit the script editor. Then we can add the text data for the picture of the memorial, since the remote asset is only holding the image. Next. We can start a new entry by adding something to the existing script. The controller script will use this JavaScript object to provide our remote asset with some textual description. Let's try finding what we added in the lens. In the preview panel, click the search icon, scroll to the name we added, and click on the name we just added to select. Great, we successfully added a new image. Because we're in the same organization, I can save the lens and send the file back to a team member without having to include the actual images I've added all thanks to Lens Cloud. This enables more efficient collaboration within Teams. 
Now I'll pass it back to Elena for some closing thoughts. LensCloud expands on what developers can build in augmented reality, from creating unique multi-user content that can be experienced together among friends and family, to bringing the world around you to life using location services. We can't wait to see what you create. My name is Wells Elkins. I'm the executive director of the Newtown Creek Alliance. We're a community-based nonprofit organization dedicated to revealing, restoring, and revitalizing Newtown Creek. Snapchat approached Newtown Creek Alliance a few months ago about wanting to find ways to better engage people with Newtown Creek. The communities that surround the creek have become very disconnected to the waterway itself, partially because it's polluted, but also because of physical access. One great thing about this project is it's a collaboration between a private company, a community-based organization like Newtown Creek Alliance, and the city itself. My name is Robin Sanchez. I'm the Director of Education for the New York City Department of Environmental Protection. By developing Botanica for the Nature Walk, Snapchat has added another layer of engagement for our visitors. Through AR, we can allow visitors to really explore the local flora that's found living and thriving along the creek. New Yorkers truly appreciate having access to the waterfront. I'm Sofia Dominguez, and I'm the Director of AR Platform Partnerships and Ecosystem at SNAP. SNAP AR enhances what people see by laying digital information and creative experiences right in front of you. When we learned that the New York City Department of Environmental Protection wanted to build an experience to help people learn about the local ecology of the Nature Walk in Brooklyn, we immediately thought of QReal. QReal is a New York City-based AR agency and SNAP Lens Network partner. They're augmented reality experts who know how to take advantage of Lens Studio's latest and greatest technology. They leverage storage services and connected lenses to bring the Botanica Lens to life. My name is Eren Önem, and I am Senior XR Developer at Curio. We wanted to create something that wasn't just for fun, but impactful and educational for the community. Botanica is a connected lens, which means that more than one person can use the experience at the same time. You can create a garden with various flowers, and the information pops up about those flowers at a certain level. We're excited about the breadth of ways that augmented reality can be useful to people around the world, including helping people learn more about their environment and the places that they love the most. The more people that are engaged with Newtown Creek, they're gonna be the next generation of people that are leading the fight to do continued improvements, continued cleanups. So it's a safer place for the community, it's a safer place for wildlife, and it's a better place overall for, for all of New York City. Excited to be here to celebrate you, the global AR creator and developer community. Excited to be here with you, not only for the fifth annual LensFest, but also the five year anniversary of Lens Studio. Stay when they 
see me. If it's the once, no need to repeat. Run up on me, watch you fall to your knees. Tip my hat when it's time for the kill. Ain't no beast when you're really real. I am the boss, I am the dawn. I am the one they call Lucky Charm. Got my own shit, I don't need your farm. See? Oh. Yeah. My name is Michael French. I'm an artist and designer in augmented reality. I specialize and have an interest in kind of novel interaction patterns and exploring these frontiers that, that AR is offering us um, as creatives to explore right now. I'm especially interested in lenses and developing experiences as Lens Studio and the technology around it evolves. As a submission for the 2022 Dream It Build at Lensathon, uh, I created an education focused lens called the Knowledge Pool, a location based AR experience that lives at this fountain just outside of the Los Angeles Public Library's Central Library in downtown LA. I chose that location in part, at least conceptually, because when I think of the library and its mission, I think of our kind of collective aspirations toward greater understanding of the world we live in and, and knowledge, and also kind of the open access to anyone and everyone to, to that knowledge. But then when I went there to, to sort of look around and think about it, that's when I first saw that these fountains outside of the library that are the centerpiece of this big monument to knowledge are empty right now because of the drought and the library's civic responsibility of sacrificing some of the beauty of the, the monument in favor of, of water conservation. But the story behind them is still wonderful and you can still honor their original purpose, but let them relate to the public again. In the lens itself, I tried to explore a series of bite-sized educational activities that a user, when they arrive there, if you look at this pool where, where the lens appears, uh, it asks you to, to unlock it with a library card that you hold up. These educational activities are housed in, in this kind of bigger educational ecosystem where a user can kind of transition between these different experiences. If you conceptualize like what AR is in kind of the broadest sense, like a portal at the interchange between this giant like physical world and the giant digital world, and AR is a great sort of like portal in the middle of that. There are a couple of subject areas being outer space exploration and undersea exploration. And there are some activities around how you can interact with and understand some principles that then might excite you to learn more or to continue through the other experiences in the knowledge pool itself. You also get suggestions about library titles that relate to that or pathways to other ways to learn about this stuff. It's gamified to some degree by awarding these kind of achievement badges that are then attached to the user's library card. So if they leave the experience or go home, they still have through the lens this kind of acknowledgement of their achievements and those, those learning experiences that they completed. I started this lens with the custom landmarker template that allowed me to scan this fountain outside the library, get some, some mesh detail about it, as a starting point within Lens Studio, and also determine the various kind of perspectives from which the user might approach the experience itself. Once that was established, I took pieces from the image marker template to use on the, the library card, establishing that as something that the lens would recognize to activate the experience. 
I had some physics features in there, some custom materials that I built using references from a number of templates, but all housed in this, in this custom landmarker feature. Thinking about how the user understands what state the experience is in at any given point became a critical part of sort of planning the whole experience always with this touch point of what experience I want the user to have, knowing that they will be wowed by the technology and, and that the magic of the AR and that wonderment that comes from it, the more sophisticated and the more kind of lengthy an AR project becomes, the more you need to, to think about every move you make from the point of view of, of how the user will sense that, how they will know where to look when, always coming back to the user as the center of this experience. I would hope that when people interact with the lens, at the very least, I would want them to come away feeling that sense of wonderment that I think most of us have had when we've seen something, especially in AR for the first time, that we didn't, we didn't know this was possible yet or this kind of thing. There's a lot that you can get from that simple initial moment of engagement that is helped by things outside of the traditional learning environments. I think AR's role in education in the future becomes this powerful nexus between these worlds of, of the physical and the virtual and the digital, creating that kind of interchange point between physical and analog learning and digital learning and presents the power of both of those combined in, in a new expression, but doesn't try to replace everything that is also powerful in, in that ecosystem. Being a part of the SNAP Lens Network community has been nothing but inspiration and, and, and positivity to me. But having that community there has totally changed the way I see my relationship to other people working in the medium. It's pretty remarkable the amount of kind of mutual support and mutual positivity and excitement that's happening in that community right now. And the speed at which the whole field is developing to have that group of people there all cheering each other on and getting excited about each other's ideas. You see people doing incredible things that you never thought of and you're like, okay, I, I want to do something like that too. You know, I want to stay part of this conversation. I want to offer something that they can feed off of. It's just a different kind of way to approach creative work. But always coming back to, to Lens Studio as sort of the heart of where, where the project is taking shape and, and, and where the magic happens. I am from Brazil, but I'm currently live in New York City. And I'm here to talk a little bit about the Send Chinatown Love project and how we've approached it. Um, we were really excited with this project. It deals with themes of uh, cultural diversity in New York City. And given that most of our team is made from people from all over the world, we thought it was like not only really appropriate, but it would give us a chance to really explore how to use augmented reality to create dialogue and also to make people explore the real world. And the moment we saw that everything was put together and we were able to see all this magical environment that we created on Lens Studio come to life in Chinatown, in New York, uh, I must say it was like really one of the most magical moments that we had here at Curio and we are really, really looking forward to release this project.
We're excited to be here to celebrate you, the global AR creator and developer community. Excited to be here with you, not only for the fifth annual LensFest, but also the five-year anniversary of Lens Studio. Big dreams, you just start I'm way ahead at the end scenes. Started reading and dodging all of the quick schemes. Money like your Spotify boy, I got 10 streams. And I'm still looking for more. My people, they got a saw. I'm putting that on the Lord. Ain't accepting, ignore. Just kicking down all the doors. Guarantee you, boy, if I ask for it, it's gotta be real big. I gotta make it just for my kids and for their kids. Just kids, that's wealth, years and years. Promise my brother, soon as he out and finish this bid, we finna do it bigger than anybody ever did. The odds is real big. Job, that's real big. Satan trying a little, my God, is real big. Stayed up on the grind on the cards, is real big. I gotta do it big. The only way that I can live. And I promise I'm trying to. Before you count me out, homie, let me remind you. They was blocking the shine. Now I think it's my time to. Careful them dollar signs. Light lights, they'll blind you. Let me rewind to. Back when I was broken, I couldn't acquire two cents. And now I got two wrists. They were sleeping on me, homie. Must have got two bit. On my phone, I be like, who this? Damn right, hell yeah, I'm brand new. Smell like can too. I'm fresh forever like canned food. Try and tell me what I can't do. I want to see the world. My vision on sham mood. I mean, I got goals that's real big. Foes that's real big. Your offer too little. Sorry, my soul is real big. Coming into the ring with blows that's real big. I got to do it big. That's the only way I can live. I got to do it big. I got to do it big. I got to do it big. Got to do it big. That's the only way to live. I gotta do it big. I gotta do it big. I gotta do it big. Gotta do it big. That's the only way to live. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Welcome to LensFest. Thank you so much for this award. It's an honor to be recognized. We're thrilled to win this award. <laughs> I love the future so much. <laughs> technology we use in this lens are the custom landmarkers. So a custom landmarker is a Snapchat's kind of VPS system, the visual positioning system. This involves going to an area, scanning it, and then using that scan to relocate content. It's a lot more magical for the user to be able to just point their device at an area, and then the AR just pops into existence.
I'm Brooke DeWitt, a product strategy and marketing manager here at Snapchat. Augmented reality is a critical part of Snapchat's growth and success. It has helped us grow the number of daily Snapchat users to 363 million daily active users and drives more than 6 billion interactions with AR alone every single day. The value AR provides our users in turn drives value for a company through app growth, user engagement, and monetization. We want to help companies and developers around the world leverage AR to drive their own growth, which is why we created Camera Kit, our software development kit that enables you to integrate Snapchat's AR technology directly into your own application. Simply build your experiences in Lens Studio and deploy them to your mobile application enabling users to seamlessly engage with AR without ever leaving your app. CameraKit provides meaningful impact for our beta partners, from leading companies like Samsung that have driven more than 2.5 billion interactions with AR on their Galaxy devices, to emerging applications like Zook, a company who's seen a 280% increase in new user acquisition, and a 100% increase in engagement through the power of AR. Camera Kit builds on 10 years of investment in our camera and AR technology. Most importantly, we focus on building a product that helps solve some of the most significant challenges developers face when building with AR. To make an impact with AR, it's important to reach your consumers no matter the devices they use or the countries they live in. That's why we've made Camera Kit available across both iOS and Android. And we've optimized the SDK size and load time to ensure consumers around the world have a great experience. In addition to reaching your audience in a native app, we're so excited to announce that Camera Kit is now supported on the web. Our first partner, Microsoft Flip, is now delivering AR experiences to their ecosystem of teachers and learners on the web. In the coming year, we hope to expand to additional partners as this accessibility is critical for developers to scale their business by reaching a broad set of consumers around the world. In addition to reaching a broad set of consumers, we've also made it simple for you to take the custom AR experiences you build for your application and feature them on Snapchat. With Snapchat's audience of 250 million daily AR users, App developers have an incredible opportunity to drive user acquisition and awareness through the Snapchat app. We are continuously investing in making AR technology more accessible to all audiences. And our latest advancements contain inclusive camera support and camera kit. The inclusive camera aims to improve the camera so that every person, regardless of skin tone, culture, or ability can take a great picture. Features such as ring light and tone work to improve low light flash capture and exposure so that the camera can better account for all skin tones and undertones, ensuring that everyone feels the camera is right for them. With Camera Kit, you can now leverage these inclusivity features in your camera as well. I'll now pass it to Susan to walk you through some of the capabilities and new features that power Camera Kit 
and enable you to bring the powerful and immersive AR experiences to a wide range of audiences. Hello, I'm Susan, a product manager at Snap. CameraKit leverages Snapchat's robust AR engine that covers the breadth of machine learning tracking, rendering, and user interaction capabilities to enable a diverse set of AR use cases ranging anywhere from teaching consumers sign language through ASL lenses to unlocking interactive experiences that help consumers explore a city or learn about a famous landmark. Today, we're excited to announce new enhancements to technical capabilities supported with our CameraKit SDK. We know that developers are always looking to have fresh and relevant content for their users, but building new AR experiences can be time consuming. Because of this, we're excited to offer beta support for remote API access to your lenses. This allows the lenses you build once to automatically update by integrating real-time data from your app directly into your AR experience. Partners like Institute use remote API technology to connect to a weather API to pull in accurate shadows for the buildings they showcase in AR. We can't wait to see what else our camera kit partners create, whether you want to provide consumers with live updates about their favorite sports game or showcase your user's latest accomplishment in your lens. For example, their current score, status, or activity level. This feature truly enables personalization with automation. At Snap, we know firsthand that bringing people together to have fun, play, or learn can drive exponential growth in core app metrics such as time spent, engagement, and retention. However, bringing people together to collaborate without an existing friend graph or backend can be difficult and expensive to achieve for developers. That's why we're excited to introduce multi-user AR support for camera kit partners. Unlike other platforms, which limit the number of participants in a shared session to a handful of users due to technical limitations, our engine enables more than 60 people to engage in a live single AR session. So whether you're physically together or halfway around the world, close friends or friendly strangers, Snapchat's technology is helping developers explore the future of connection. Context matters. We know that to drive engagement of AR, you need to ensure the experience is relevant to that person. One of the most powerful signals for context is using locations to build experiences around the physical places people visit and explore, unlocking new reasons to engage, learn, and have fun. This is why we now offer support for location-based AR within CameraKit, enabling you to create unique AR experiences that are tracked to the structures and buildings of locations around the world. Location AR includes famous landmarkers, which enable you to render AR content on pre-mapped monuments or locations like the Great Sphinx of Giza, the Taj Mahal, or the Leaning Tower of Pisa. With City Scale AR, you can create unique AR experiences in select regions within cities around the world to tour places, reveal historic moments, or even at anchor restaurant reviews. Lastly, custom location AR gives you the flexibility to map any location from anywhere to bring AR to life, from parks and murals to your favorite concert venue, and educate and inspire your consumers wherever they are. Now I'll turn it over to Danny to cover best practices for CameraKit. He'll share the ways your audience can discover AR experiences within your application, as well as how to plan for an always-on AR content strategy. To ensure a successful camera kit integration, we recommend that developers incorporate AR as a natural part of their experience. This entails establishing how AR solves real problems for your users and designing how AR best fits in their user journey. Hi, everyone. I'm Danny Trin, a platform designer. When designing your camera kit integration, it's important to remember that you can completely customize its appearance, navigation, and more. As a developer, think of your camera kit integration like a super-powered camera view that should feel native to your experience and your community. The key to the best camera kit integrations is a thoughtful approach to making it feel native, useful, and natural to your app. We're so excited to see what you build. If you plan to make AR as a core feature of your app to let people express themselves, create content, or tell stories visually, you should focus on maximizing the reach and engagement of your camera kit integration. In short, put it front and center making the camera as accessible and easy to find as possible. Take Snapchat, for example. It opens directly to the camera, and AR is just one tap or swipe away on the home screen. With its 6 billion daily AR interactions, this is one of the ways Snapchat has made AR a core experience of our community's everyday lives. An excellent example of this is Zook, a video app for creating shared family experiences through reading, learning, and playing when they can't be together in person. 
Zoog puts the camera and AR previews on its home screen to use immediately upon opening the app. They've built an intuitive and approachable camera kit integration for their product that allows consumers to experience the value of AR fast. The camera is central to the content creation experience within Zoog, and AR seamlessly fits in their experience, keeping families connected. However, not all apps need AR front and center. If your goal is to add AR as an incremental enhancement to your app, you should focus on finding how AR can make a feature or piece of your app more engaging and personalized. In this case, it's important that the AR experience you offer is relevant to what you already have. Regardless of where AR is placed in your app, it's important that your call to action is clear, visible, and recognizable by your users. Moj, a popular content creation platform in India, follows this approach and uses AR just inside of their creation experience. As soon as a content creator opens the camera within Moj, they see two ways to access AR, a general carousel with multiple lenses and a beauty-specific carousel. Creators can also browse a variety of lenses in a separate tab, selecting the category of lenses most relevant to them. Another important thing to highlight is making your plan for AR content or lenses in your app. When you integrate the camera kit SDK, you're getting the power and capabilities of our AR platform in your app, but you're not getting the AR content itself. You'll have to pick which lenses to include with your camera kit integration and manage them. This is your opportunity to customize or build the AR content that best matches the interests and goals of your community. With AR, it's important to be nimble and open to learning. We recommend you listen to your consumers as the best feedback loop for the AR experiences you build. Start off with a diverse set of lenses to learn which are most impactful to your goals and determine how to use this feedback loop to inform improvements and expand the types of content you create over time. Once you understand the volume and types of content required for your audience, we recommend keeping AR content fresh and extending usage and AR entry points. If you're brand new to AR, we recommend experimenting with lens packs from the Creator Marketplace, which are categorized groups of pre-made lenses from top Snap Lens Network members. Lens packs are an easy and effective way to acquire pre-made AR content across a variety of categories, including beauty, professional, utility, and games, which can kickstart your integration, help reduce your time to market with AR, and inform your future content strategy. Once you determine your long-term goals with AR, it's time to develop and build experiences that make the most sense for your audience. Lens Studio is our AR development software used to develop all AR lens experiences. It's free to download and includes a broad set of templates and tutorials to help you get started. You should start by evaluating if you or someone from your company has the 3D, animation, and development skills to use Lens Studio directly to build your lenses. If not, do you plan on outsourcing AR creation to an expert AR agency or individual designer? If you're looking for custom and advanced AR experiences, we've made it easy to tap into Snapchat's existing network of expert AR developers who can help you build AR experiences from the ground up. When working with developers, we recommend approaching them with a long-term AR strategy to set yourself up for success and a continued partnership. You can access top AR developers through Snapchat's Creator Marketplace, and we're also building out a preferred partner program with agencies such as Atomic Digital and Fisherman Labs. Once you've built or purchased lenses and integrated them into your app, don't forget to notify and educate your users about the new capabilities and content in your app. For example, based on your typical communication channels with customers, you can notify users through tooltips or updates within your app, external push notifications, or email mailing lists. You can also highlight your AR feature in the App Store to entice first-time users to download your app. We also recommend augmenting your camera kit launch with updates with marketing support in blog posts on your owned and operated websites or organic social channels. We can't wait to see what you do with AR in your application and are so excited to push AR into the hands of more people around the world. Now, I'll pass it back to Brooke for some final thoughts on Camera Kit. Thanks, Danny. Camera Kit is so much more than just an SDK. At Snapchat, we're building our solution not just as a technical platform, but as a much broader offering of tools, services, and partners. We know that your available resources can make or break your ability to achieve success with new technologies. So we built a suite of management tools to make onboarding, integrating, and growing your solution easy, along with an ecosystem of creators, agencies, and partners who are experts in building with our technology and can help you manage your integration. We are always looking to hear from you, our community of AR and app developers. With Camera Kit, we want to build the features and capabilities that matter most for your business. And we've made significant investments in improving our developer engagement capabilities 
with a brand new developer forum available at community.snap.com. You can ask us direct questions about our products, features, and capabilities, and join a community of developers building with CameraKit. We've also launched office hours, where you can sign up to speak directly with our product, partner engineering, and developer relations teams to engage in open discussion, ask questions live, or provide feedback and feature requests. We know that augmented reality and camera kit can drive meaningful value for your business and customers alike, and we can't wait to see the types of experiences you build. If you're interested in camera kit, please request access to our beta at ar.snap.com slash camera kit. Thanks so much, everyone, for joining us. AR technology is really opening doors we weren't even knocking on yet in terms of how fans can engage with our characters and inhabit some of these larger worlds in the Nickelodeon universe. What sets Lens Studio apart from the other AR programs is the scripting and materials. The JavaScript format and API are intuitive and easy to work with. And the material graph allows me to create some awesome shaders like the fire and air shader used in this lens. As a programmer, Lens Studio is definitely one of the most developer friendly AR programs out there. Lenses and AR can be used synergistically to help tell stories and further immerse audiences in ways that have never before been possible beyond the 2D screen. I hope we're giving fans access to part of the mythology and take what they love about this world and those characters and share back their experiences with us on social. Excited to be here to celebrate you, the global AR creator and developer community. Excited to be here with you, not only for the fifth annual Lens Fest, but also the five year anniversary of Lens Studio.
Hi guys, it's Dave and Alice and we're hitting the streets of London to try the Lego City Mesh Lens. You can find the Lego City Mesh Lens on Snapchat. Here we are, first stop is the Royal Albert Hall. Mm -hmm. hey! <laughs> Ready? Yeah, Start. load it up. Loading city data. Open Snapchat. And if you're in the 17 kilometer radius of central London, the lens will interact with some of the buildings around you. Hold on, my love, it's your turn. Come. Okay, here Come. we go. But what's super cool is anything you add in the lens stays there. So when you reopen the lens in Snapchat, you can keep adding to your Lego playground. If you're in London, join us and celebrate 90 years of Lego with this lens. Hi everyone, I am Carolina. I lead Snap's AR business strategy and I am so excited for this session. We have brought together some of the industry's leaders who have really built incredible businesses in AR and hopefully we can use this session to steal some of their strategies, advice and tips for so many of you who are thinking about building your own careers in AR. So let's dive right in, probably best with introductions. Let's start with my fangirl moment, Paige. Would love for you to introduce yourself, your name, your job, and a bit about your business in AR. Awesome, well, thanks so much for having me. I'm Paige and I'm an augmented reality makeup and character artist. I've been creating social AR effects for the past three years. And I think I've built at this point maybe 300 effects across platforms. I create a lot of effects to try out different character looks, makeup looks, and I've really just kind of like been focusing for the last few years on just trying to connect with an audience that way by creating effects that I love, that I feel like other people can use to tell their stories with. That's awesome and such a unique perspective as you're building your own business and, and brand. Jason, what about you? I'm Jason Yim. I'm the CEO and founder of Trigger XR. Uh, so we're the world's most experienced XR agency, 275,000 plus hours now. And our first AR project was in 2009, so webcam based. Yes. So we've been, we've been here for a while, but we deliver content for brands and agencies across sports, entertainment and, and commerce. And how many people now do you have uh, working? We're just over 60 full-time people. That's great. Wow. Congratulations. Thanks. From 2009 to now, that webcam. I like how you've really evolved <laughs> since then. <laughs> Times have changed. Um, Herman, what about you? I'm a CEO and founder of 3 It's a company in Buenos Aires that we do virtual reality, mixed reality, augmented, all kinds of realities, and, <laughs> and a lot of animation started in 2004, so it's been changing a lot. Uh, I'm director, producer, and uh, I'm running the company. Very happy now, where everything is going with these new technologies and excited to talk about it. Yes, me too. And Ben, please. Yeah, I'm Ben Knutson. I am the founder of KAR Graphics, and I've been making lenses since about when Studio came out in December of 2017. Um, I started as an individual creator and then slowly kind of built up my portfolio and then started my company. That's great. Well, as you can see, a lot of different perspectives uh, here on the panel today. So I thought it would be really great to start by talking about how each of you got into AR. I assume as young children, you weren't thinking, my dream is to be an AR developer and have a business in AR, although maybe that was the case. 
I know that talking to some of you, you've had different paths to get into AR, whether you started in animation and VR and then bridging into AR. I thought it'd be really great to talk about when you actually got into AR and why you decided to start to build an AR. Jason, do you want to kick things off? Yeah, sure. Like I mentioned, our first AR project was in 2009. It was for Sony for District 9, and it was webcam-based AR. So you actually had to print out a piece of paper, hold it in front of your webcam to actually see the AR, you know, like the, the mothership or the alien on top of it. But for us, we were, back then, we were doing a lot of Flash games. We had a, a, a team that did 3D graphics, and we had game programmers. But the studios, we did a lot of film marketing, they were always trying to innovate because every weekend there's like a brand new movie coming out. So AR just became one piece of technology that we we're going to investigate and try to use on, on the next film. But we fell in love with it from that first project. It felt like the future. It felt like it was finally something that wasn't just stuck on the 2D screen behind. It was actually in our world. So we yeah. just went from it. From that so point immersive, on. interactive. You started more in like the gaming space and then sort of pivoted more into AR and yeah. that stuff. And it overlaps so well with entertainment, right? Like yeah. all the characters and all the stories and... Yeah. What about you, Paige? Um, so I've worked in influencer marketing and digital media for about 10 years. And on the side, I just enjoyed character illustration and um, compositing, taking photos and turning them into fantasy-like artwork. So I had always kind of loved that stuff and just did it for a passion. And then when I realized I can create filters online, I just downloaded the software and started doing the things I would do in Photoshop to transform a photo, but do it in AR so that it could be something I could wear at any time, share with friends, see on them and stuff, try out different makeup looks create different characters from movies that I loved. And so it became just like a big passion where I just started creating effects as a social AR creator. Over the first year, I started to generate a lot of buzz around my effects and a lot of followers. And at this point, I think I'm somewhere around 200 billion impressions on my effects across social platforms. And I now work with brands and I create characters for them. I bring music video characters to life. So I've always had a passion for creating character looks, even when it comes to video games and just customizing my character. That was always my favorite thing. So now I kind of just do that in AR and I customize our characters that way. Paige, I think that's really cool because your path is a bit different, right? Which is you started with this personal passion that you had and you saw this new medium as this way to finally express that in a opportunity that really didn't exist before, that you can put your imagination into people's hands for them to create with uh, versus just consume. And that's such a different opportunity for creators to go from creating something people see or see something people view into something that people are a part of. Uh, it's, it's a really exciting and creative kind of aspect of the job. Absolutely. I remember myself playing with mirrors and, and drawing over mirrors and reflecting light on those mirrors and projecting things. and and kind of like playing with augmented reality in that very basic sort of technology. So I was always like, since I was three or four, passionate about like bringing imagination to, to life into supernatural ways, like, like this kind of power that technology gives you to really defy physics and, and just come up with the most random thing and, and make it happen. So I think I was always passionate about that for sure. And, uh, and we started the company early, so there was no VR or AR or nothing, but like over the years, like as the technology opened, uh, we started playing with that and just as a medium to, to come up with what we really like the most, which is uh, character stories, like different worlds or feelings or scenes. So I think for us, it's, a, it's an opportunity. And, and I think we're just like in the middle of something that is going to be much bigger than what it actually is today. What about you, Ben? Um, I actually kind of stumbled into it. Back in 2018, I was working at an IT job and finishing up my IT degree. And I just kind of discovered Lens Studio and I was looking for an outlet to learn more about coding, and I figured out that this was the perfect platform to do that. So I utilized Lens Studio to kind of start learning how to code and how to, you know, make these interactive experiences, and I just fell in love with it. And it kind of blew my mind because I thought it was the future of communication. I mean, that's so awesome and inspiring. I think for someone who works at Snap to hear, it was really interesting actually when we first launched Lens Studio in 2017, a few months before, we obviously had our prototype version before we broadly launched, 
and we did a small and confidential kind of launch, soft launch. We actually got a group of high school students um, together. Uh, it was actually all uh, 15 and 16 year old uh, girls uh, from the Los Angeles area. We got them together and we actually previewed Lens Studio to them. These women were really into art and illustration, but they were not AR or 3D experts at all. Um, and we introduced to them Lens Studio, the first version, and the AR lenses they built in that short session was just the light bulb that I think so many people at Snap were so excited about. You know, taking young, just creative people and giving them a new tool to create with and just seeing how almost intuitive it felt for them. And they kind of also got inspired for what else might they be able to do. So it's just so great that that was sort of part of your story as well. It's really cool to understand and think about, you know, all of you are leaders already in AR and growing your own businesses here, but thinking about that you're very much kind of bleeding edge and some of the first people who are really investing in the medium, thinking about what's gonna happen over the next 10, 20 years with how many people who are maybe in elementary school today or high school today who now have so many more tools within the space at their fingertips that you know we didn't have before. I think it's just exciting to think about what that trajectory might look like. Yeah, I think it's interesting to understand what is it that is happening with AR today that is making it so interesting and so successful. But because in its essence, it's this possibility like when you have a face filter to look like someone else or to look like a creature or, or like to have this power to play is a very like pure and simple concept. It's just like to be kind of like a little god, maybe on your face for a little bit. And then as technology evolves, you're gonna be having much more superpowers to play around with other elements around you and outside the cell phone screen even. I think the use case is also gonna just grow so much more than just play. Like, mm -hmm. I feel like right now, if you look at phones, right? Like we are at that stage where we have a flip phone and you can call people, you can message and maybe take really bad photos. Like that's <laughs> the state of AR right now versus where it's gonna be is you have a smartphone, you're on it all day, and it does everything for you. And I think that's where AR is gonna go, so. That daily uh, utility. Yeah. I mean, I assume in your day-to-day -day, you know, professional lives, you're actually seeing some of that shifting in the use cases that perhaps you're building for. And so actually, do you have any insights to share to other developers of what are the use cases that you've seen even over the past year start to really grow in how many times people are requesting it, if it's maybe a client or even just experiences that you yourselves are really interested in building because you're seeing your audience is engaging with it more so than perhaps they used to. Um, would love to hear or share kind of your insight on those use case evolution. Well, I've seen specifically for physical products, there are a lot of try-on experiences and with the combination of the shopping template where you can actually link products directly from the lens, combining that with the world mesh, people can now place objects in their rooms and basically test out to see how it'll look in their room or they can try on makeup or anything like this. So there are so many different ways for companies to kind of bring in and allow people to kind of play around with these things and then also shop for them and kind of try on and see what works for them. I've actually had that experience as well with clients when we're creating makeup filters and stuff like that for beauty brands. We're taking that experience where you would have walked into a store and you'd see that their campaign for their new makeup collection, you'd see it done so well on a model and maybe you'd wonder, can I do this myself? Should I have somebody do this for me? Well, it's an experience you can have now where you can go and try on that whole look. And so what we're doing with brands is we're taking their campaign look that they're doing on their collection and we're creating that as a filter so you get to try it on. And it might inspire you to go buy that product or check it out at least because maybe that color is something you didn't think of trying before or that that lip shade or something might be cool to try out. So we're working on trying to create very realistic and um, exciting makeup experiences. And the same for our characters in movies. And when you watch a movie, you might see a character and say, wow, I really want to see what I could look like if I was dressed up as that character. And now you can go and try out something like that. And so those are the type of things I think brands that I've worked with are really excited about is creating those experiences that people want to try on and then consider maybe to go buy or try out a character and then send it to their friends and their family and see how would you look as that character too. And so it becomes like a fun sharing collaborative experience for us and the brand. Each time we, we move into a new industry, it's like a whole new set of use cases to focus on as well. So we do a lot on the sports side mm -hmm. and we pull in a lot of uh, real-time live data 
from the games and stuff, and that's being presented in AR. So it's kind of deepening the, the viewership experience. We do a lot of uh, AR portals where we're trying to bring people from outside an event into an event and feel like kind of some presence of, of actually being there. And then even taking AR all the way up to kind of like training level for some of these top leagues and top players where using that as a tool to improve their actual performance on the field. Yeah, totally. I see like maybe these categories of like training uh, and professional training is a very strong one. Then like problem solving in a day to day, like an instant translation or something, or you need to associate something like kind of like problem solving. Then you have the entertainment, which is I think the strongest in the sense that like people laughing at it and sharing and uh, the advertisement and, and inviting people to other experiences like that are outside of AR, but can take you somewhere and make you belong there, like musician that you like, and then, then you can kind of like group people there. And so that's the four quadrants that I see for AR. I think it's really interesting because like basically all of you and you talked about the use cases that you're seeing is really starting to emerge or take off perhaps more frequently now than it used to a few years ago, which maybe was a bit more focused on self-expression and sharing and really took hold very early on. Now we're seeing more utility and more use cases beyond that. All of the use cases though, even the entertainment ones, uh, the sharing and self-expression ones, they sort of all still relate to a consumer problem that you're helping to solve. The more you're able to stay focused on the consumer need you're solving for, it seems like that's really where we're starting to see the growth and use cases that are successful in AR. And I think that's really good advice for developers who are thinking about getting started in their career, which is how do they think about the skills that they should practice or the types of use cases that they should prototype or kind of build experiences around um, and kind of taking it back to, well, where is it in, in our day-to-day -day lives that this could actually provide utility? And how do you start to think about that in a more kind of holistic way of not just my client is asking for this, but this is actually what people also want. Yeah, and also uh, this is what I want or what I am. Like your own identity, I think is the most important factors in some cases. Like some people, like they really have a strong say and, uh, and, uh, and they have a profile and this is what I like. So they make the best filters because they're so invested because that's who they are. And it's not for everybody. Like some companies, they, they provide like amazing services and understand the needs of, uh, of the consumer. Or, but like somebody who's starting, I think to kind of like know what you like, that's kind of like important for what I think. I actually think that's a great um, thing to mention because one of the things I wanted all of you to talk about was this idea of building your brand. How important do you think it is to actually kind of invest in staying really loyal to what you think is your core kind of business or brand? Or is it more of a, it happens over time or your reputation is built over time? I think that's a super interesting question. I get this a lot internally, like staff might ask, okay, what's the long-term vision and what's the path that we're taking? And I think from a company's perspective, it is still so early that I feel it's more of a, you're not trying to draw a straight line. It is a land grab, you know? It's greenfield right now and let's explore in as many directions as possible. Of course, you're kind of limited by funds and, and number of people and stuff, but there are gonna be pockets that you're super interested in, but we don't need to draw a, a single line through that. I completely um, agree yeah. with that. I think that it's, like you said, it's a land grab right now. It's there, There's so much opportunity for you to branch out wherever you want. And I think it's just, you kind of evolve as AR evolves, and so you evolve with it. And I think that right now, like I, you would almost be limiting yourself by trying to just, you know, build your reputation in a single way when you can so easily go and do something that might not have even been done before. That's the beauty of this right now is that it's so new that you can be the first to do something or branch off into this certain area and create your own unique style, so. And, and everything kind of cross-pollinates other stuff. So you might head down and investigate one industry or, or one type of technology and actually has applications all the way across the other side on, on a different project entirely. So you don't know how it will become kind of useful, but it's almost like, I feel like just experience and portfolio, like that's the currency, just build that. You know? So I actually wanted to talk a little bit about 
how you started your kind of business or your bet on like this, I think I'm gonna turn into a professional career. Oftentimes, when we talk to different types of developers who are just getting started, they're actually just really scared to start. It's like this fear of, I don't have enough of a skill to do this as a profession, or there's so many other big companies out there that are you know, gonna take the work, or I don't have the network to do it. And so what's your advice for people just getting started? On the artist side, I think definitely this is this opportunity again, where when we evaluate people, it's just purely on their work. It's just purely their portfolio. So it could be an 18 year old, it could be someone straight out of college, it could be another country. Like we don't care, it's, it's just that work and I think there are very few industries in the world that allow that kind of way to get into it, you know? Like normally you you have whatever kind of job resume or schools you went to and you have to build that up. I, I feel like in AR, it's just purely the work and, and you can get in. Uh, I might add a little bit of a counterpoint to what you said. I actually reacted or resonated more with what Paige said where bringing inspiration from different things, you know, like from art, from books, from movies that you're seeing, from music. Like we try to find things that are, are unique Obviously, we want the kind of base skill set of, of being technically a able to do it, but I think we're always trying to look for that diamond in the rough that has a slightly different perspective from someone else and can, can bring something different to the table. So. I love what you said, and um, it's really so true that like there's a lot of people that are just starting out and might think that maybe it's maybe it's too late to get into this. And like you guys have said, it's so early, like it's extremely early. <laughs> and also as a creator, like even if there's thousands of creators, everybody has their own voice and their own style. And so I love when somebody new comes in with a fresh perspective mm -hmm. and new ideas because what they're doing is they're looking at the current environment and landscape, and they're seeing what you're creating, what I'm creating, what everybody's creating, the capabilities that are just out now. And then they come up with a brand new idea based off of that new, fresh environment. So there's something amazing about seeing what somebody does that's brand new in the space and when they find their voice and they start putting their work out. And there's so much inspiration out there from creators to movies to books. Like, it's it's endless. So there's nothing that should ever hold anybody back from joining in this space. And what will happen is you'll learn as you start creating, um, you'll grow an audience. You'll also, brands will reach out to you. People that you know will start to say like, oh, this person does AR. And so I remember the first month I started, I had an, somebody reached out to me with an opportunity and I was like, wow, this could really become a business for me. And so it's like at any point, it's the time to get started. That's great advice. And it's also helpful to share with people, like how do you get your work discovered? Like oftentimes if you're seeing a new potential artist that you might hire or, you know, someone that you're inspired by, or if you're a brand and you're looking to hire someone, is it because you saw their work somewhere that went kind of viral a bit or there was a lot of attention about it on, on Twitter or on Snap or on other platforms? Or was it because they, you know, sent you their portfolio? What's typically the process for discovery? for like a new artist, what would your recommendation be for how they get discovered? So if you're already gone a little viral or if you already have a strong identity and you're building on, on, on it, you're already there. Mm -hmm. For everybody who's starting, it's like really put a lot of effort in doing like a really well done thing. Mm -hmm. it doesn't matter what it is, but it's like have to have like this effort and perseverance and getting it, getting it right to the point that you see it and you say, I, I don't know how I could improve this. And then you go and show it to people. It's like, what do you think about this? And then you, you get the feedback and maybe you improve it a little bit. So it's like this dedication, I think it's like, a, it's a great way to start. And then, yeah, and you're gonna have more things to do or things to say through your art down the road. Also speaking to people who, you know, are still trying to get discovered and build that audience is that I think it's it's so important that you just put stuff out there that you no matter what you're just creating totally. and it doesn't necessarily always have to be the most high quality work as long as you're just constantly making new things with the lenses whatever audience you have will react but not only that people that don't even know who you are or aren't even following you can react and see these and it will just naturally build our first many years we were really bad at marketing ourselves so we just we were 99% just referral-based work. And then the, the last few years, we've turned that a bit on, on its head and are pushing more on the marketing side and a lot of outreach. And I think we're, we're seeing that kind of like improvement from there. But I think from a new developer, just if there are teams that you want to work with and other people that you, or brands that you're impressed with, like just 
reach out and try to connect. There's all these ways now through LinkedIn or you know, get, get people's emails, show up at conferences. Like the people that actually step up and get the work in front of you, I feel like uh, they've already, you know, lifted themselves above everyone else because of that kind of effort. So investing in new talent and education. I mean, that's part of building your career here, or being successful, right, is continuously looking to improve, continuously pushing yourself and maybe taking courses. I know this is something that your you know, company is really starting to, to kick off. I'd love for you to share with us a bit about that. Yeah, we're excited about this new program we're doing with the Navajo Tech University. We actually, the past couple of years, we've been working with the Diné Youth Group out there, we've been uh, uh, funding a uh, youth center for them, uh, their library, their performing arts stage. But the next step for us is working with the university where we're doing a lecture series this coming semester, which is an XR 101 series, but using Lens Studio as the basic tool that the, that the students will come in and learn. And hopefully through this, after this lecture series, they actually can walk away with a skill set that they can go straight into doing some freelance work and, or at least start building experience from there. For people who are thinking, I do want to make this a career, it's, well, you have to also commit to, you know, investing in learning new technologies. I started out making YouTube videos way early on when I was learning Lens Studio. Hello, everyone. My name is Ben, and this is Ralphie, and I'm an official Lens creator here to talk to you about Lens Studio. A lot of people think that it's there's this huge barrier to entry for it, but it's actually a lot easier than a lot of people think. And that's what I was kind of trying to focus on with my YouTube videos, which actually kind of led to a little mini series on Snap AR YouTube channel called Basics with Ben, which was literally just about five minute videos showing you how to do some amazing things in Lens Studio without having to know anything about coding or anything about animation. You can just jump right in. And that's led to doing uh, other workshops and you know full courses for say like Snap Lens Academy. Lots of different ways to kind of get into it. And it's really exciting to be able to help people get into that atmosphere. So we've, we've talked a bit about getting started, right? Like getting over this intimidation, the fear of really investing in your own thing. Now, let's say that you know, you're know you really a professional, you're, you're starting to work and you're actually working with clients. Let's have a bit of a real talk. It's not always fun. Uh, there are challenges working with clients. I would love, and I'm sure everyone would love to hear your advice for how you typically manage uh, tricky clients. <laughs> for me, I think the biggest part is education. Educating the clients, because a lot of the times uh, these tricky clients just simply haven't worked with AR before and they don't understand um, what the technology is capable of, what it isn't capable of yet, or um, even what the audience would want compared to what their vision is. So educating them right away and showing them this is what's possible, this is what people are reacting to now, this is what uh, people like, could help kind of guide their vision more so that you don't have to have that conversation halfway through the project by saying, this either isn't going to work technically or the, uh, your, your audience probably won't like this kind of a thing. So it's better to educate them early on and so that you kind of have this same vision going forward. 90% of the cases, like a good start for a solution. Most of the time, what happened in our cases is that we were too focused on making the best AR filter or the best product and we were forgetting about looping the client in, getting the client into, and, uh, and kind of like inviting him or her to be a part of it. The only thing the client really wants sometimes is to really be a part of the process, mm -hmm. even more than, than having the best result. That's what I found. You have to make him a part of it, and then uh, the chances of success are much bigger. That's, that's what I would say. I mean, first, we're, we're starting to also build at scale and also start working on more long-term products. So mm -hmm. I think one thing that clients really appreciate is going in there with the, the kind of research to back it up. So mm -hmm. we do a lot of uh, kind of a user-centric design at the beginning, brought on a VP of product. We, we're bringing in, you know, different research type of people to at least uh, provide the thinking at the beginning that that's supported. And then as much kind of communication, like you said, with the client along the way. So full transparency, they're, they're part of the entire iterative process. But even with all that, it's still hard. Like we still, after all these years, we still struggle with things like change orders and rounds of revision. It's part of it, I feel like it's kind of the nature of the beast. 
You know, it's interesting too, because Paige, the way that you engage and work with clients sometimes is different because you aren't just sometimes building, you know, content for them on their behalf, right? You're building content with them, but for your audience that then, you know, they're going to be a part of, but it's really your piece of AR experience that you're going to post to your channels versus kind of building it for them, maybe shipping it off and then they are distributing it under their name. What are some of the challenges and ways that you've managed your clients or partners within your type of business that you've grown? I feel like I attract the type of clients that like the type of filters that I create just for my own portfolio. Mm -hmm. So I'll get makeup brands and beauty brands, fashion brands and stuff, musicians that are looking to create something similar that they've seen in my archive of filters. So a lot of times they go into it with an idea of their own. And so we really try to like get that idea out of them to find out like, what are they really looking to create? Like you said, it's good, or you guys both said, it's like good to listen to hear what that client wants to create because they have ideas of their own. They have visions for what this filter could look like. And then I try to just take it and just try to help them, guide them to understand what capabilities we have, what I think could be more effective for them. If maybe there's something that I think they can leave out, but add something else in. So we work together to really like nail that concept down. And we have very, like strict contracts that really cover like those amounts of revisions and stuff. So we don't really like to start the filter until we really have their filter down, whether it's in like, you know, a drawing or we've conceptualized it completely. And then once we get started, we find that there's very little rounds of revisions because they're so sure about what they want at that point. So it has helped a lot. And I learned that from error, from just starting out and having trying to just do things all by myself without having my team involved. And I just, or I didn't have a team at the time. So I tried to just do it myself and I just didn't have any um, rules about rounds of revision. So there was one client where I had like 30 rounds or something. Like it was endless rounds. It was just back and forth, like slightly move this or slightly move this, or it doesn't fit on me as well. Like move it this way. And it was very overwhelming. So I learned like you really need to get that concept down first. And then you have to have your, your guidelines in that contract. And then everything works really well. I think that was such great advice, like starting early on by having a very, like spending the time on the concept uh, before you're going into production is such a smart approach. I also think you mentioned something which is really helpful for maybe people who are taking their maybe business to the next level, which is I'm no longer maybe thinking about me as an individual. I'm maybe thinking about hiring additional people on my team for the first time. What are the types of skills I might want to hire for? It's like thinking about the complementary skills to yourselves. I think one of the key and you know areas that I wanted all of you to talk about too is the future. How are you thinking or what are you thinking about the technologies or the trends or the use cases that you think are going to be really important over the next few years that you're sort of keeping your eye on and investing in, exploring? I think uh, what's really trending today is to just the social part of it, not using technology as a way to isolate and it's more like sharing and sharing together and everything is about just meeting other people like and making the reality richer. So it's, that's kind of like the current topic and where it's going immediately. And then I'm just like really eager to see where the technology goes mm -hmm. and what new opportunities opens for us. Yeah, definitely me too. I think, especially with the spectacles, I think there's so much potential for what that could mean for a day-to-day -day utility in AR. And beyond that, with a more specific example, recently Lens Studio has released uh, the Lens Cloud. And specifically, there is something called Remote Assets, which allows us to have a ton more space in our lenses, up to 25 megabytes in a lens, whereas before, it was, well, at the very start, it was four megabytes, and then they doubled that to eight megabytes. But now we have so much opportunity to bring in things, and I think this is gonna have so many potential use cases for industries that couldn't get into this before, just specifically because they didn't have the room for it. For maybe a lot more try-on experiences, we can have a lot of complex 3D try-ons in one single experience, or you could make an entire game with a whole slew of assets that are inside of it without having to be limited on making sure all of our textures are and our models are compressed uh, you know, too much. So I think with the addition of the Lens Cloud and the remote assets, there is going to be an explosion in the potential for the different uh, industries that can jump into this. Like for us, we, we really hunt any project that has like AI involved, mm -hmm. you know, where, where AR is becoming more powerful or smarter because of uh, the influence of, of, of AR and live data, because we think that that's just going to elevate it to the, to the next level. And then another area that we pursue are things where 
location is part of the context. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, landmark type of AR or, or if it's like VPS systems, you know, citywide kind of AR, we think that that's, that's just going to be a, a big part of the future where, where AR content is, is everywhere. So the sooner you start working with those kind of tools and, mm -hmm. and, and how to kind of implement that in a way that works with consumers. But I know what I want to see in the future, mm -hmm. which is I want to be able to put on glasses and have my imagination run wild with uh, games inside my house or to transform my house into a totally different environment. To be able to put yourself in a rainforest inside your kitchen or to make your living room look like a lodge in the mountains somewhere. These are the kind of things I'm looking forward to. And so I'm thinking about those kind of capabilities now. I also still enjoy like character effects. I imagine in the future, I'll love to create things with machine learning or to be able to use a prompt to generate a filter in a moment, you know, something like that. To be able to say, I want to see like pandas walking on the moon and I want them, them to be all rainbow colors and stuff. And then all of a sudden I have a filter like that. Like that's the kind of stuff I'm looking forward to in the future. I mean, I want to go to Paige's house, but <laughs> um, <laughs> I think that's great. I mean, honestly, what, basically, you're, you, you've all talked about a bit of a different but very similar perspective, which is new technologies, right? So things like, what does it mean when you can have cloud services to help expand the capabilities of what you can do? Things like new hardware that changes the context of the user and the experience of the user. I'm no longer looking at this experience through a tiny mobile phone in the palm of my hand. We like to call this condition arm tired. Your arm gets tired. You know, there's physical limits to what you can do. That limits the use cases of AR. And all of these things in combination is really just opening up new opportunities for the role it'll play in people's day-to-day -day lives. Like, what do you as a consumer want to see? And then it translates to business demand. And so how do you then future-proof your business is let's learn the new technologies, let's experiment with the new hardware, let's get learn and, and really ready for the next few years to future-proof your business. I think I'd love to just end on one quick fire round with just one piece of advice that you would give to an emerging developer who's really trying to make a big career in AR. Either they're kind of starting off as an individual person who's you know, a creator by themselves or they're starting their own company and taking that next big bet. I would say that like, uh, you know, Compared to when we started, when we had to walk around with like posters and stuff and convince people and educate people what AR is, like I feel that at this point, that world, that spatial digital world, I mean, it is a certainty. So getting in now is super important and you have that confidence that whatever you build now is gonna pay off down the line. That technology is well on its way to becoming completely ubiquitous. So it's actually not that big a bet. You know, the industry's still kind of dipping their toes in the in the water a little bit, but it's not dipping your toes into a pool. It's dipping your toes into like the ocean. <laughs> like that's how much green field we have to play. So, love it, Paige. And I feel that um, no matter where you are in your experience level as an artist, that you could try you could try making effects at any point. So even if you've never picked up a tablet before to draw anything, or you might not know how to draw, you've never created three D models before. Like there's a place for you to learn and start. And I just feel like. Don't ever feel like there's a barrier to get started. Just do it. Portfolio. You need a portfolio, so get to work in the best portfolio. If you have weird ideas, do your weird ideas. If you don't have no idea, copy something. We're hiring. Everybody's hiring. Like, we need people. Like, there, there is so much room for creators, for developers. So it's like, all you need is a portfolio. And... And you don't need a crazy, unique, different idea, but if you have it, great. Just get the portfolio done and you're good to go. <laughs> <laughs> and Ben? So I know this has been said already multiple times, but if you are interested in AR and you're wondering if it's too late to get into it, it is not too late. We are still at the ground floor of technology and augmented reality, and there's no way to go but up right now. There is limitless potential on where this could go. We don't even know where this is going to go five, ten years from now, but all we know is that it's going to keep moving forward. So now is the best time to get into it. Uh, you can be confident because this industry is only getting started. You should do work and be authentic to the work you do and build a portfolio, which is very, very important. Thank you guys so much. This was so great. I feel like I'm ready to start my own company. <laughs> uh, thank you again. Thank Thanks you. for having Thank us. You. Thank you. Thank you so much.
Shake Shack has really moved to a much more digital company. We think AR could be the next iteration of that. Snap and Shake Shack are both very focused on creating great experiences for our guests. And AR is a new way of delivering hospitality. It's a new way of delivering experiences and engagement for guests. So this is the ultimate expression of that, to be able to come in here and engage with these great lenses. Really exciting. The only way that you can get the merchandise that is available at the Snapchat is through a Snapchat e-commerce lens. It's the first time we've created a shoppable AR lens that intertwines with the physical retail environment. Try in the clothes through the digital mirror, buy it directly from your phone, and pick it up right from the merch cart, modeled from the original hot dog stand that would eventually become the first Shake Shack. My favorite part about the collaboration between Snap and Shake Shack is that you have two brands that have such passionate communities and they're coming together to create something that ultimately is just a lot of fun. We see that as a natural evolution. We're excited to see how that can work for our guests going forward. We're excited to be here to celebrate you, the global AR creator and developer community. Excited to be here with you, not only for the fifth annual LensFest, but also the five-year anniversary of Lens Studio. I'm Chanel, I'm from New York City, and I'm the creative director and designer for the brand Bed on Water. Made reached out to me at a time where I didn't have the resources to put on a new collection, but just kept sketching and sketching, and here we are. The thing about AR, it's something that I always wanted to tap into, but just didn't have the bandwidth. I knew when I did these paintings in 2021 that I wanted it to serve in the next collection. I hope it allows the world to be a little bit more sustainable. Like, okay, maybe we can't do a full collection, but we make key pieces, and then we do the rest in the digital universe. Hey, when you elevate, elevate, elevate. Hey, when you elevate, elevate, elevate. Not everyone could access clothing in real life, but if you could access it digitally, I think it can expand fashion. Hi, my name is Kingsley, and I'm the founder of Kingsley. 
for Maid, we will be showing Act 2 of Collection 1. Because Kingsley did start off as a internet brand, I wanted to segue into AR. For this aspect, I was really excited just to bring a guided experience that continued the conversation, which is very subtle, it's still chic. I'm really excited about the experience that we are creating. That's just another extension to the brand. My name is Thermo Tavares. Kiss Sachi from One Smoke Clears. We've partnered up with Made by PayPal and Snapchat to produce a collection with AR. This specific project is mostly based on how much we rely on technology. I feel like you're getting an even more in-depth piece of our brains. I kind of wanted to bring people to a place that I feel like inspires a lot of what American culture is now. And AR has given us the opportunity to fully communicate the world that we're trying to create. For all the dreamers out there, we can make those dreams turn into reality with AR. Hello everyone, I'm KP and I support the AR Partnerships team here at SNAP. And I'm very excited to be here with all of you as the host of our next panel together with a lot of great entrepreneurs and someone from our investor community. As an ex-entrepreneur myself, I have experienced firsthand the value of platforms that not only invest in building great tools, but also the resources and the support for anybody to build a sustainable business. And let me tell you this, AR is no exception to that. As we get out of the early days and we reach a state of maturity for the Snap AR platform, we hear again and again from our partners and from developers on the platform how important it is for us to build those tools and continue to drive value for them in ways where they can build the sustainable businesses that they aspire to. So in today's panel, we have three amazing founders to share with us all their experiences building on top of the Snap AR platform and a representative of the VC community that he himself has been an enabler for both platforms as well as innovative experience to be built on top of those. Without further ado, I would like to introduce you to our fellow panelists. Zuzi, Dustin, Dana, and Nico, welcome. Could you please start by introducing yourselves, your companies, and tell us what your role is there, and tell us when the whole thing started for you. Nico, for you, when I guess you started investing, and for you guys, when you founded your companies. Sure, excited to be here. Thank you, Disnap. My name is Nico Bonatos. I'm a managing director at General Catalyst. Our firm is a multi-stage VC firm. We're in the business of partnering with ridiculously ambitious founders who hopefully over time build category-defining businesses. Our mission is to invest in positive and powerful change that endures. I've been doing it for 12 years now. And over the last year and a half, I've been very intrigued and inspired to invest in technical Gen Z founders 
who are changing the face of the internet as we know it today because they're building products for themselves, because they're going to change the face of the internet as we know it today. Hi, thank you, KP. Thank you to Snap for uh, having me here. I'm Dana Hermesh. I'm an architect from Tel Aviv, Israel. I moved to New York in 2017 to become an urban data scientist. And in 2020, I founded my company in situ. In situ is on the mission to bring future cities to life via augmented reality. We take urban development information from private and publicly available resources to empower citizens in the process of urban change. I'm Dustin Kogan-Sparger. I'm one of the co-founders of DB Creations, an AR game studio based in Bellevue, Washington. We build games that are trying to you know, find the next generation of what gaming can be in augmented reality. And I've been doing that since 2015. Great. Welcome, Susie. Hi, thank you for having me. My name is Susanna Bastian, and I'm the co-founder of Javels, which stands for Virtual Jewelry, or Javels. Javels is a NFT platform bringing jewelry into AR and VR. We collaborate with designers from all over the world and make their designs wearable. And today is the first anniversary of your company. Yeah. Happy birthday. True. Thank you very much. Wow. It's amazing. <laughs> so I noticed that in your interest, you talk about founders, partners, stuff like that. But if there is one word that will help us understand exactly how you introduce yourself, that defines you, what would that be? Like in my case, for example, I always think of myself as an enabler. So if there is one word for you, what would that be? Innovator <laughs> for more inclusivity and uh, creativity and sustainability. Awesome. I'd say for me, I would go with producer. Uh, this is the title that I had when I was in the games industry before uh, founding this company. And uh, for me, that's a really big part of, of being able to be successful is being able to you know, manage all the bits and pieces that are required to make you know, video games like we do, which are <laughs> pretty complicated to build. I would say um, that I'm very mission driven. I feel that no one else can uh, bring to the world what I'm supposed to do with Institute. In my case, I would use the word catalyst. That's in the <laughs> name of our, you know, firm's name, General Catalyst, because the founders are the protagonists. We are in the background helping them establish an unfair advantage as they're building their companies. Awesome. So most of you, I guess, for our founders in this panel, have started the company a year ago, a few years, you know, like back. What was the motivation to get into this space? What was the actual reason you decided to invest in AR? I have always been very inspired by the possibilities of augmented reality, but it hasn't been until we found the Javels that I really started to contribute to the augmented reality space. So with Javels, we want to make virtual designs, virtual fashion wearable in real time and real life. And when we discovered the possibilities of the snap camera, we have discussed this before for Zoom calls. I mean, I work and have been working in the healthcare industry where I sit in Zoom calls sometimes for eight hours a day. And it just doesn't make sense to dress yourself or style yourself physically. This is Fantastic. what inspired us to build these experiences in particular with, with Snap. Thank you. I'd say for us, we actually founded the company initially to work on uh, VR stuff. We wanted to kind of build VR games and apps. I know, right? It's so scary. <laughs> but I think the thing that we realized pretty quickly in developing VR, one of the things we didn't like about it was it's very isolating. You're putting this like headset on that fully obscures your view. You'd lose sight of all the people that are around you. And that was something that really surprised me how quickly that really started to hit. It's like, oh, this technology is amazing, but you know, we're losing that sense of social you know, presence being together. And so for us, like augmented reality was kind of the next quick jump. It's like, okay, I, we see what's going on with VR, it's pretty cool. But in AR, we can have those same kind of experiences that are truly transforming your world to be more engaging, more exciting, you know, making awesome game experiences. But they're also inclusive. They're pulling in the people around you to have that experience. And I think that was the, the big thing that drove us to move into AR, and you know, we haven't looked back so before I became an architect in my military service in Israel, I served in the Israeli uh, Air Force as a flight simulator trainer of uh, F-15 pilots. So for three years, I was at the forefront of technology, observing how the uh, smart simulation really transformed how we train uh, on in-flight malfunctions. When I became an architect, 
I was very frustrated from how non-innovative was my new profession, from how inefficient was all the process of urban development and city planning. I worked for six years in the city center of Tel Aviv as an architect. Tel Aviv, I don't know if uh, who here knows it very well, it's small but pretty aggressive urban development realm. And the more I became an expert in how the city is being developed, the more I felt that I can see the future. I used to walk or bike in the streets. I just knew what will be built where or what could be built where. And I had this moment of clarity of everything that I see that I can visualize in my mind is publicly available information, but ordinary people cannot see it. And usually this data is nested and fragmented in the best case scenario, some website, the worst case scenario as a paper on someone's desk. And I was like, why can't we just raise our phone and see a layer of the future built environment on top of the real built environment? And that was back in 2013, 14. I don't know if I even called it augmented reality. <laughs> When we moved to the US, I definitely didn't know that I would be so fortunate to pursue this dream and build a company but I was very determined to study urban data science to kind of shift or expand my toolbox as a person who shapes cities or shapes lives through shaping cities uh, towards the more data-driven, tech-driven solutions. So in C2, which I founded in 2020, after interning in the Department of City Planning of New York City, I founded this in C2 as the company that truly kind of reveals this layer Uh, of information that exists but no one can access otherwise. And to me, AR was never about gaming because that's not my uh, industry. It was always just a very powerful tool to truly change how we interact with the world and to truly empower people as they experience their cities and neighborhoods. Can't wait to have it in San Francisco. So, Nico, you have been an that's early champion of AR probably known to a lot of people that you were one of the first investors in Snap and Snapchat back in those days. What was your main motivation back then and what is the thing that gets you excited about the technology these days when we're getting to a place of maturity? Yeah, absolutely. For us, AR is the future of computing. It's a new way for humans to interact with computers. And in the case of Snap, in the early days, Evan wanted to build the fastest camera app out there and he stayed true to his mission uh, ever since. Like he was one of the founders that had a crystal clear way to paint a very detailed picture of the future and has done it all along, you know, like the seed pitch and the S1 IPO memo had like a lot of the same stuff, which is inspiring to see. But look, you know, for us as venture capitalists, we're following the true innovators and producers, the founders. And as the technology is getting better in the background, new ways to interact with computers are getting born in the heads of the founders that we would like, you know, to see in the world as well. So our mission at GC is to invest in positive and powerful change that endures. We do so by virtue of partnering with ridiculously ambitious founders who hopefully have what it takes over time to build a category-defining business. Awesome. Well, I mean, we talked about how and what you are uh, looking at in making investments, but you have, they now already raised money from an institutional investor. So wh what was the, the support that you were looking for to get by uh, raising that round? And how did that help you in the state of the business that you're running? Of course. So maybe before raising money, um, so as I said, I started in C2 in 2020 and I started working on the idea in 2019 from a small urban design company in Brooklyn. Back then I told my boss, yes, I'm an architect, but I just graduated from this data science program. I have this idea of bringing AR for city planning. Can I use part of my time in the office to kind of interview uh, our clients, our partners? And for all of 2019, every meeting that I had in regards to our real projects, to me became a user interview for the idea of applying augmented reality to the process. We talked with planners, policymakers, designers, architects, uh, residents, of course. In January 2020, I left for maternity leave, and we already knew uh, that I want to spin out with that idea and to build a company. And back then, I did not look for money. I never worked in tech. I was an architect before. I looked for kind of a safe environment that will let me incubate this idea and will give me enough mentorship and coaching 
to become the CEO that this company deserves to have. And back in 2020, I got into the Schmidt Futures Entrepreneur in Residence program. Schmidt Futures is the public benefit arm of Wendy and Eric Schmidt. They are based in New York. And it was me and another four amazing impact-driven entrepreneurs that each of us had their own idea and company. For two years, we were supported by Schmidt Futures. In the middle of them, uh, at the end of 2021, I raised a pre-seed round from two VCs and a bunch of strategic angels. And recently, over the summer, uh, we transitioned out of this program and Schmidt Futures invested uh, $1 million in in situ as a way to, of course, become an official shareholder after the amazing support that they gave us. We are really getting to the product market fit, finalizing the offering that we have to our clients. We are able to launch much more innovative projects. Uh, one of them was launched this morning, actually, in uh, Agora Hills here, the first wildlife crossing that we bring to life via AR. So I think to us, this funding is really to kind of get to the next phase of really being able to scale after that. Well, too many things to celebrate today. <laughs> <laughs> so Dustin and Zuzi, you guys haven't even raised any money outside maybe some sort of financial support from Ghost and the Snap Lens Network, but you're still running sustainable businesses. So. Maybe for you, Dustin, first, and then we can switch to Zuzi. Like, what sort of support would you like look for at this point of time? And how can we help, like, as an ecosystem, your business grow? Yeah, I mean, for us, the big thing right now is trying to understand the market for AR games, right? This is such a new, a new place for people to come to play video games. And so for us, it's a lot of learning about, you know, who are these customers? What are they like? The kinds of games that they're used to playing and how we can actually build games to, you know, match the things they're looking for. So for us, we're looking for platform partners that can provide, you know, a base of users like Snapchat is a great example of one for us, you know, that are already primed for AR, that's a really big one because we've launched games on iOS and Android in the past just as standalone apps. And the challenge there is a lot of those users, when we launched at least back in 2019, they're not ready for an AR experience. You know, they're expecting something that's going to be flat screen on their phone as soon as you ask them to like put something out into the world around them. They don't know what that means quite yet, uh, you know, because they're just not, it's not the ecosystem where people that are used to AR are in. So for us, like coming to a platform like Snapchat, where we have these users that are already ready to go uh, and learning about them, building products together and experimenting, uh, right? Like it's all about that kind of experimentation stage right now for us. And so that's one of the biggest things we're looking for in terms of, of support from platforms. Awesome. We're here to do that for you. Absolutely. And what about you? Zubi? Yeah, I have to agree fully with you, Dustin. There are so many common points we have. Uh, because when we launched uh, the platform last year, it was an NFT platform, so each of the designs is uh, tokenized as an NFT and wearable in augmented and virtual realities. We have seen so many changes in the past months of the market, right? Many companies, fashion companies, are looking into the VR space, right? There have been enormous opportunities with other partners for augmented reality and to build these experiences. So, so we are also trying to understand where is the ca customer and the consumer. You have an incredible community of uh, Gen Zs. Uh, we also see it in our numbers, who is using our lenses. It's mostly 14 to 17 year olds. So we really can, can learn from this and also build these experiences together to make them more fun and also to build the world of tomorrow uh, together. Yeah, so um, I think we are at the stage where we appreciate every discussion uh, with uh, business angels, investors, with new partners, with other companies, um, with even traditional jewelry companies. I mean, that's kind of what you reminded me of when you were talking is like the space is always moving and changing and evolving. And so, you know, we appreciate being able to work with uh, platforms that are willing to listen to, you know, our insights and help us figure out together, like, hey, what's a path we could go down, you know, knowing that maybe it's not going to be the right one and we have to pivot. Like That's going to be really important to the success in AR is that agility and speed to try something, test it out with users, see where it goes, and then go from there. And so that's something we've really valued as well as we, we look to grow our company to the future is, you know, how can we maintain that agility right now in this space? Everything's moving so fast. I can probably convert that panel to a focus group. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, then yeah, I want to say I can add. So in C2, uh, beginning of 2022, we're chosen to become part of the SNAP's Ghost Fellowship. And what we were looking for and still exploring, and I, and I think understanding more and more Thanks to what we did uh, with Snap over Ghost, is the right 
uh, distribution channels of our content. I think my biggest fear was always, what if people don't care? Like, I am so passionate about bringing future cities to life, but what if people don't want to download an app to see city planning around them? And we started, before uh, getting in touch with Snap, from a mobile app, an iOS app uh, that used AR kit, AR core, to generate the AR. And it was quite hard to make people download an app let alone the city planning app, which is not the coolest uh, (laughs) thing, I guess. But when we uh, got into the Ghost Fellowship, we were looking to test first how Snap's AR technology can just improve the content, the AR experience, so make it much more um, uh, interactive and engaging, but also using Snapchat as a platform to distribute the same content that was in the past only in our app. What if we put it over Snap. And recently we modeled and launched a project uh, in Manhattan, a real under review uh, upcoming development in Fifth Avenue in Midtown that can become more offices or can become affordable housing. So it's in this um, planning uh, phase of review. We put it over Snapchat and after less than three weeks, 100,000 people viewed the project which is, as one mayor told me when I told them this number, they don't think that ever in the history of cities there was a project that 100 people saw before it was built. So I think um, thanks to this partnership and to enabling our content on the right platform, the right channel, we were able to make the impact that we were looking for uh, from the beginning. Well, Nico, as an investor, you're obviously looking at founders before you decide whether to you invest or not. So what sort of traits or signals are you looking for there? And clearly, these guys are all super motivated. They are pursuing, you know, like dream projects and, you know, like with passion and a lot of purpose. But outside, you know, giving them extra motivation, what, what else should they expect from you when they decide to take your money? Sure. So we're looking for individuals who are learning animals because it doesn't matter where what you did before what expertise you had in this new world, especially the AR world, uh, that a lot is to be invented. You got to be able to treat every single user interaction, partnership uh, opportunity as a learning opportunity. So we want individuals who very quickly, within the span of a few years, will become the world-class domain experts in their field. We like, especially for the consumer-facing companies that we invest in, to have at least one founder that has a good understanding of how distribution works. Mm -hmm. So if you have that, this could mean that you can unlock over time a distribution advantage without having to raise a ton of money, to spend it on paid acquisition, do influencer marketing. This is all the kind of stuff that bigger companies, you know, can do because they have the budget, you know, to do it. But as a young company that nobody knows you, you're trying the hardest to create awareness about yourself knowing how to unlock distribution could be really, really huge. So back to you guys, all three of you are running sustainable businesses. I don't want you to tell us state secrets <laughs> or, you know, like disclose your secret sources, but I'm sure you have experimented with different business models mm-hmm. and NFTs and stuff. Can you tell us what sort of experiments you may have run to help your business generate revenue? What worked and maybe what hasn't worked so that others can learn from your learnings? We can start with you, Susie. So we have two main uh, revenue streams uh, right now. The first one, obviously, NFTs. So we collaborate with designers from all over the world who create their designs and we bring them into the virtual space. So we bring them to life. Then we launch or drop the NFTs and we open uh, these designs for the outside world. We also have collaborated with uh, traditional jewelry uh, designers. We have collaborated with Gary James McQueen, for instance. He's um, a renowned designer from uh, from the UK on the Jubilee crown. I don't know if you have seen oh, it. Oh, wow. Already in June, we, we launched this crown and uh, it was amazing. It ha- has been worn in the first weekend, I think over two million times. Wow. Uh, we also launched this crown as an NFT, and from this experience, we have lear- learned a lot, of course. And also regarding partnerships, we collaborate with, um, of course, people from the Snapchat Lens network, but also with Snap and uh, with other companies. And here we also have another revenue stream. Awesome. Uh, Justin? Yeah, yeah. How I many think. virtual goods have you sold? <laughs> 
Uh, not enough, I'd say. I need to sell more. Yeah, you're getting there. <laughs> um, yeah, so I mean, like I mentioned earlier, we initially experimented with just launching on iOS and Android as a paid app um, back in 2019, um, which, like I said, was not overly successful just because uh, the users weren't expecting it. And launching a standalone app on iOS and Android is just a very difficult thing to do without a large marketing budget, as we I think know at this point. So uh, it didn't really go where we wanted it to. And that's where we started looking for alternative opportunities. So, okay, we can't just launch something as a standalone app right now. What other things could we do to get users, to get people playing our games, to do that experimentation that's so key to our success? Working directly with platform partners to build games for their platforms, for their audiences, to collaborate together and be successful, and then use the methods they have for monetization, be it, you know, uh, in-app purchases or uh, ad-based revenue or that sort of thing. You know, like we're, we're very flexible to try and test a bunch of stuff. Like I'm really excited about the future of this space where we could do things like in-app AR advertising. That's something I haven't really seen done a lot yet, but I think compared to a traditional like full screen, you know, pop-up ad that you see in a lot of mobile games, I think an immersive AR ad could be a lot less obstructive and a lot Amazing. more uh, interesting to yeah. users. So that's some kind of stuff we're thinking about as we look to the future. Awesome, thank you. And what about you? So for in situ, we came with the mission to democratize urban development information. So we knew from the very first start that users or residents will never pay, pay for, for this. So we had to find who will pay for this. We started from real estate developers who are required by law to uh, communicate, to do public engagement about uh, changes that they uh, propose to the built environment. And these have been the, the biggest revenue channel. Let's admit real estate developers are not on the mission to democratize city planning, um, but uh, there are specific projects that were the good candidates to start with. And what we learned and what we wanted to prove is that one, the fact that it's so accessible and it's only mobile truly allows us to get to a broader audience that the people who come to city planning hearing and mostly shout out know about everything. <laughs> and what we proved in all of our projects is that for people, when they explore future developments on site, in real scale, in augmented reality, as if they're already there, they are much more comfortable about them. Awesome. So, Nico, we have three founders here that figured it out, right? They, they established a business model and hopefully that will be sustainable for the long run. But there are still a lot of use cases with AR that are unproven. And as such, there is no way to monetize. So from your advantage point, three years from now, is there a use case that you feel excited about? Not just for the use case itself, but for the opportunity to, to build a business around it. Absolutely. In the next three years, a lot is going to change because you at Snap and some other larger technology companies are funding the massive, you know, platforms that the innovators in this room and thousands of others are going to be building on top of. So I think three years from today, distribution for all things AR, which be, will be much easier than what it is today. And um, for you to have like a very vibrant and sustainable ecosystem, we'll need to come up with monetization opportunities for anybody who would like to be building on top of the Snap platform. I do expect though for like gaming and uh, fitness in particular, consumers will be paying out of their own pocket for some of these experiences. Like this is not so crazy, you know, to believe. It's already happening in VR. And the experience there is not that awesome. It's isolating. You cannot be, you know, behaving as a real human. Mm -hmm. So in AR, I would imagine it could be like, you know, massively more exciting for consumers to pay for that experience. In enterprise, we're seeing actually good monetization already today. So for example, in the healthcare tech world, we see uh, surgeons and hospitals pay for training. So Dustin, in the history of platforms, there hasn't been a single one that wasn't successful without a successful gaming ecosystem. But there are a lot of uh, people out there that may not be hardcore gamers. Mm -hmm. What sort of advice or insights do you have for them that are willing to invest in AR, but they don't know yet what sort of vertical or use case they should be invested? Absolutely. I mean, I think for me, like I mentioned earlier, one of the things I'm really excited about is AR for advertising. And that's like a huge pool of things, right? It's not just finding out new ways to put ads in front of people, but also ways to use AR applications, AR, you know, lenses, AR, whatever your platform you're on, you know, AR technology to make experiences for companies that want to better engage with their customers. I think there's so much 
open space there. And like, even as a game developer, I'm very excited about seeing, you know, where can we use games to be a part of that? And I, I want to find people building in that space that are making exciting advertising experiences that move beyond what we've already seen today. You know, we've kind of tapped out a lot of the traditional advertising, you know, methods that we've used. And so in this new moment where we've got all this blue ocean space to build for AR, I think it's time to start working on the advertising space as well to bring it to this new generation of technology. And Zuzi, you are into try-ons, whether they are digital products by, by design or whether they are physical products converted to, uh, to digitals, there is an opportunity for monetization over there. But again, outside the try-on use case and the commerce use cases, do you see one where people should be investing, leveraging AR? Obviously, with Devils, we look primarily at the fashion industry, where I really see a huge opportunity. But besides that, I think um, education, the whole education system, the AR can have a, such a positive impact on how our kids, right, in future are going to educate themselves. And with this also hand in hand, you, Nico, you uh, mentioned it, the medical system. Surgeons learning how to do surgeries or, yeah, everything in the in the healthcare industry where I also... So you can bridge the two world well together. Yeah, so. yeah, exactly. So, uh, yeah, AR offers huge opportunities, but I think those with the most impact, like mm. also education and medicine. So you've all invested in AR and we're very grateful about that. But what is the unique thing that AR brings to your experiences that you wouldn't have with traditional technologies or web-based technologies? And secondarily, Snapchat, we talked about it, it's a great distribution platform for you, but outside of that, where is the value that you can get from leveraging the app itself and the community of users that we bring? I can start. Uh, sure. Yeah. I mean, for us, AR is really this transformative technology that allows a new kind of gameplay experience we've never seen before. By having people able to experience digital worlds in their physical space and together, I think that's the really mm -hmm. important part. You know, VR, as we talked about, much more isolating. But with AR, we have this ability to both, or all of us, see this virtual world we're projecting into our actual space and merging our realities. That's magic like I've never seen before. And I think that's really powerful. And from the Snapchat side of things, uh, we're really excited about the technology that Snapchat provides. The platform itself allows for rapid iteration through lenses, is something that, you know, in games, you know, iteration is kind of the name of the game for us, pushing builds every day or every week. And so being able to quickly try things out using this powerful technology that is quite advanced. It's one of the more advanced technology stacks we've used for making games in terms of being able to understand the world that we're building in. And I think those two things together make Snapchat a really effective platform for game development for us right now. Awesome. Lucy? Yeah, so our mission at Devils is to make a virtual designs wearable, and this is uh, this we can enable very well with augmented reality. I mean, with one click, you can make a beautiful design uh, by a renowned uh, designer, accessible by anyone in the world. It enables inclusivity. Um, you know, you don't need to change the size or um, or the form of the design. Everybody can wear it just like this, you know, and with uh, Snap, your technology is so interoperable that uh, you can use it not only for social media, but also for your virtual meetings. And I think this is very valuable. Cities today face so many challenges, climate change, adaptation or recovery, housing shortage, uh, migration and geopolitics. And there is so much to do to develop and to communicate with residents to do it effectively and in a, the most equitable way. And I think for most people, urban development is too big to perceive. For most of us, the first time you see a project is when it's a construction site. And then you're like, where did that come from? But actually it was in the process, openly available, the data, for two or three or four years, but you just didn't know. And I think if we want to transform how cities are changing, who is part of city change, who is the beneficiary of urban development. Letting people see is the first step that we can do and let them just understand in a very, very tangible and accessible manner. With SNAP, I think uh, besides the fact of how uh, amazing distribution channel it was for our content and how we could engage more than 100,000 people in seeing an upcoming development, it's also about the demographics. Marrying these two industries of urban planning, the heavy, the old industry, with 
the coolest AR technologies with the most interactive capabilities in such a widely adopted and known platform, we could really get Gen Zs to see and say what they think about an upcoming project in Manhattan. We can truly diversify participation in planning thanks to AR and specifically to Snapchat. Thank you. I wish we could go on forever, but we only have time for one last question and let's do it quickly. So if there is one thing, one thing that you want people to take away from this conversation, what should that be? We can start with you. This is a very dynamic space. So stay curious and very patient because whatever you think it's working today and like a few months from today, it's not going to be working as well. And with all the awesome opportunities that platforms like Snap are going to be throwing at you, you got to be curious to find out about them first so you can make a hell of a difference. So patience and curiosity. I'll second that from the founder perspective and tell people that want to build uh, businesses and impact-driven businesses to be uh, very mission-driven, patient and curious about how to bring their ideas to life. Don't listen to people who tell you that you cannot succeed <laughs> and always find the one next step that you need to achieve to move forward. I think uh, taking it with the kind of lean startup method truly pays off. Um, because you learn so much in the process. And just listen to whoever around you. Yeah. I think we're all just going to say shades of the similar things. Like mine was going to be agility, right? Like maintaining an agile mindset and instilling that in your team. I guess that's the take I'll add to it from the production mindset I think about a lot. You know, ensuring that you're, the people you're bringing on and people that are going to join your company are also able to join you in that flexible mindset, that ability to you know, focus on the thing you're doing now, but also be ready to pivot at a moment's notice because the technology will change. You need to learn new skills. You need to become better at something you've never looked at before. I think those are going to be hallmarks of teams that are able to be successful in this space because it's so new and so active. I fully support all of this. Um, I would add a connect because each conversation is an opportunity to learn. So also stay curious, stay agile. Thank you. Thanks for the words of wisdom. I wish I knew you guys 20 years ago when I started my own startup. <laughs> it's never too late. No, never. Bye. Bye. Thank you. <laughs>